If I ruled the world, I love them, love them. Uh, hello, welcome to If I Rule the World, episode number 14. Uh, I'm going to kick it off. Today we have, man, somebody that I've been a fan of musically for probably the last like 20 years, seen his group play many times. Gore Tex, aka Gore Elohim. Peace. I, you know, usually George paints the picture. Today I'm going to paint the picture. Paint so, on. growing on, uh, growing up, uh, I definitely had some issues. <laughs> so, dur- one or two. One or two. So, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, doing my thing over at this, uh, you know, inpatient place. And, uh, okay. I, I, growing up, like, I, I was always in tune with music. And then I had to, like, dip out of society for a few years. And, um, when I was on my way out, like my boy Bob started going to Fat Beats in the city and he would bring me back some shit because like I could, you know, I, I was a little, I, I couldn't really make it to the city as many times and, and he brought me back. It was I Shot Reagan and I forgot, I forgot the other one. It was um, Get On Your Knees, On Your Knees or whatever. What was that Necro track? Uh, I think it was that. Yeah, something like that. So, and, and it had like the Dionne Warwick fucking sample. But it right, was right, I right. Sh- it was yeah, I yeah, Shot yeah. Reagan, like, that came back from uh, the group Nonfiction, and it was, like, something that I've never heard before, and uh, yeah, basically from there, I just ran with it, and I've been a fan ever since, so. No doubt. Good looks, man. Um, so, I, I just want to take it back to, you know, because I was telling you earlier, there's a lot of things that aren't really on the internet, um, so I, I figured if we're here, let's just have, like, the Gore-Tex Story. History. I think so, right? Yeah, even researching, I, I was looking up, you know, Sam's been telling me and telling me, and I'm doing my own research, and I'm like, right. you know, there's not a cohesive history here, so that's what we want to do today. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's there's definitely not a cohesive um, history documented, but there's also a lot of disinformation, so, I mean, it's like that with anything, but... go Going you know, back to, like, let's say, just growing up, right? So you're, yeah. you're you know, let's take it from almost like the Lemoore's time. Okay. Right, so you're 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 like a young kid. So that's probably like eighty six. If you want to give people a timeline of eighty six, and that's like the yeah. fucking year of thrash. Yeah, right, and Lamore Absolutely. too. Absolutely, like the fucking year, like all the all 80, the classic records came out. Eighty four, eighty five, eighty six, mostly eighty six, but eighty four, eighty five too. What were some of the records that came out in like eighty four, eighty five that that really stuck with you? Um, eighty four, eighty five. I mean, Corrosion of Conformity came out. I mean, obviously, um, Slayer, Hellawaits, Possessed. Pleasure to kill. Sure, pleasure to kill. Celtic for us to Megatherion. Um, what was it about that music? Like at, at like an early age? Is that were you living in Glenwood? But by, by that, um, yeah, eighty six. I actually moved to Glenwood. Before that, I mean, I lived only a few blocks away from Glenwood in Canarsie, which mm-hmm. was not far from you know where I lived, like five minutes away. Yeah, but, my girlfriend's whole family is from Canarsie. Yeah, but when you cross, you know, when you cross Ralph Avenue, it was like, fuck, man, we don't, we don't want to, like, we're not. Yeah, you know. So growing up, we didn't cross Ralph Avenue. Then eventually, I had to move. I had to move there. So like, yeah, there was no choice at one point. So, and but yeah, that's probably it's roughly like eighty six. I mean, that's like the first. That's the first time I went to Lemoore's where I was able to say fuck it because you're supposed to be sixteen to get in. You know. So you going there? Do you remember like the first show that you saw? Oh that? yeah, the first show was um the first show was Anthrax that headlined and Jesus. it was wow. I think it was Lethal Aggression that opened up. And I don't remember who else though. Some I think it was another local band, but I remember being in like the first or second row, and like the singer dived and like kicked me in the face with a boot. So I was like my first. I'm like, okay, this is Lemoore's, and I have like I have a lump on my head. Yeah, you know. So and that place was scary because it was the middle of nowhere, and it was like a warehouse district. It if was I industrial, it was, industrial it was, it was area. Definitely industrial. I mean, it wasn't completely barren. I mean, it was stuff, but that particular stretch of a few blocks was just all you know. Uh, like, like not junkyards, but you know, automotive shops. Yeah. And then, you know, um, it was definitely, it was definitely a little run down. Um, a funny story is we, you know, me and Bill would go there and, you know, we would take the bus and, um, we just had this extremely long route that mm-hmm. we didn't know any better. So we would take one bus and get off the bus and have to walk about seven long blocks. I mean, it's like crippling blocks, you know, just, just to get there. Yeah. Then find out like, you know, years later we could have taken another bus that <laughs> right. <we> just, <laughs> Dropped us off literally right, right in front there. of the fucking club, like yeah. right by the bowling alley. That's you know, yeah. And we would kill ourselves, you know, like pouring rain. We'd be like, "Yo, man, we got to walk to the bus, man." It's right. like it's like a whole now thirty-five minute walk extra for no reason. Yeah, so, I mean, whatever. But, I remember but, seeing Biohazard. I felt like they were like the house band. They played there all 
the time biohazard, biohazard and life bio, of agony absolutely absolutely though i mean biohazard got there i mean well, i mean biohazard were always tight that's the thing and some bands you know they need a lot of shows like you know they get tied in to get that biohazard were tight from in the, the start. rehearsal room mm-hmm. in the rehearsal room they sounded as tight as an album mm-hmm. which was it was psychotic you know but, shout um, out to evan for doing porn now so <laughs> not, I'm not, I mean, I'm not hating his career move. No, yeah. yeah. Should we Definitely. give a shout out to Lupe? Oh, little Lupe. Th- that's yeah. more yeah. what yeah. I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to little Lupe. Shout out to little Lupe. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Evan. Shout out to Billy. Actually, too. Shout out to Canarsi. Shout out to yeah, man. <laughs> so, um, it, all right. The fanzine I think is like super interesting because you're 13, and at 13, like I don't, I just didn't really have the wherewithal to put together like a fucking fanzine. So yeah. what made you want to do that? I mean, like, you must have been a super... Mu- like, yeah, I was I, a weirdo. Yeah, it was, it was totally weird, you know. It cut, I, what was I, the vision? Um, I mean, the vision was just to have something in print. I mean, because it's like I'm still, like, a fucking nerdy, avid, you know, vintage magazine collector and all that stuff. But the, the goal was just to have something in print that had basically all the bands that were coming out that were just next level, you know, that just, just something fucking brutal, you know what I mean? But have like good, good interviews, you know, rather than just thrown together. A lot of zines back then were just thrown together. They ask like dumb questions, you know, like, oh, do you worship Satan and stuff like that? But <laughs> which is funny. And, you know, it's funny, but it's like I just want to do something next level. So the people that I would have like, take it from like, a fan perspective. Then. Oh, like a total. Yeah, a total, <laughs> the total extreme fan. But, you know, something done intelligent. I felt like just because if I was 13, I wasn't going to, you know, I didn't want to come off like super fanboy. You know, I still. You know, I'd ask about musicianship, you know, production on the record, all that did, stuff. Did was you always play at all? Me. Yeah, I've always played a little bit. I mean, I've always played bass. I've, I play guitar. I mean, I fuck around on drums. You know, um, I don't play piano. Well, I would have liked to learn how to play piano. I regret that I haven't. I didn't take lessons when I should have. But yeah, I mean, I fuck around with those instruments. I um, I have this project coming out. Um, I don't want to say too much about it. It's you know, it's not hip hop. Let's just let's just. Uh, I'll leave it at that. It's something else I'm doing. Okay, yeah. It's I mean, pretty it's, it's pretty it's pretty crushing too. So but I don't want to give it away that that's that's something else. Okay, yeah, definitely. Um but then mo- moving forward like from from like the Lamore's time and stuff like that. So you you and Bill Ill Bill uh were like friends forever then, right? Yeah. So so coming up like when did it switch over to like hip hop? Um I mean the thing was when you know, when I met when I met Bill, um you know, we're obviously both in the metal and stuff. I mean, when I moved to the projects, he was the first person I liked that that we we got along. That he was open minded. That was into stuff. Um, you know, were you guys just into everything, right? Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, metal. You know, yeah, '86. There was a lot of great hip hop, but it was a lot of metal coming out too. So yeah, I could say we would we were probably a little more involved just in that scene only because we were able to, in yeah. a sense, because in '86. I couldn't go. There was no tunnel. There was a Latin Quarter. Mm-hmm. I couldn't get into Latin Quarter. The older kids I knew, who were basically Decepticons, who actually went to Latin Quarter, those guys were coming home, getting stabbed, and I'd see guys running home with bandages on, and like you know, at three in the morning, I'd, I'm like, "Yo, these guys came back from the Latin Quarter. They got stabbed up," and I'm like, "Fuck, man! I just to see hip hop, I don't want to get yeah, stabbed." Right. See- <laughs> yeah, doesn't see. Yeah, so I was it. like, "We'll we'll go to the Slayer show." Yeah, like you know, we're not. <laughs> yeah. you know, we don't want to get stabbed. It's funny when Slayer's a safer option but back you, in the it was, 80s. I mean, it, it, it was at that point. I yeah. That just goes to show you, I mean, you couldn't you couldn't go to hip-hop clubs back then, especially if you were white or you didn't sure. even, That shit, you know. It's easier to get beat up than stabbed, I think. So, like, if you you get beat up at, at like, a Slayer show, right. you're like, oh, you're you not going to get stabbed at Slayer. Yeah. You not, might get beat more, up more, in more, the 80s. In the 80s. Back then. Yeah. yeah. You probably wouldn't, you wouldn't have gotten stabbed. You, you, you probably would have gotten more stabbed like a Cro-Mag show, you know? Right. With a couple other bands opening up and then, you know, I was at a show. It was, I think it was hardcore. Was it was, was, I think it was a Cro-Mag show, and um, it was at Lemoore's, and these two dudes came in. They were in camel jackets with mm-hmm. Nazi armbands. Oh, that'll oh, do. Oh, boy. And they lasted about yeah, 15 seconds in there. I, guess, I, was, yeah. I was standing in the back by the bar, and I was like, yo, these, these guys are going to get fucking destroyed. Hardcore shows and back then and did. were violent. But of course they were violent. It wasn't like, you know, like you're saying with hip-hop shows. Well, well, no. Nah. I mean, hardcore shows. You know, well, hip hop shows. You couldn't really go there. Yeah, hip hop shows. You couldn't really go there and feel welcome if it was. You know, if you're talking about like old, old, old school stuff, like you know, let's say Brand Nubians or you know, like Cypress Hill. Yeah. You know, when those groups came out, if you went to those shows, 
you wasn't like it wasn't cool it wasn't a friendly atmosphere right you weren't gonna go there and smoke blunts and hang out with your friends and show off your sneakers like and fit that wasn't happening right you know? probably because it just wasn't like mainstream ish yet you yeah. know like it was still it's still grinding it wasn't it wasn't no it wasn't completely mainstream yet it was it was fairly underground yeah so it wasn't um, like accepting so it, it wasn't as culturally diverse of, of you know of people who liked it you had just mainly diehards mm -hmm. you know, and, and if you knew you'd know i remember you know, I mean, a friend of mine went to see Cypress and the first album came. Literally, we were the only, we were the only white or, you know, Latin dudes. That, you know, there's, right. there's, it was only us. Right. So, and be real. And be real. And be real. And, 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 and mugs, you know. But, oh, yeah. and mugs, and mugs too. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was it. So, I mean. Shout out to War Porn Industries. <laughs> shout out to War Porn. Shout out to Mugs. Shout out to Soul Assassins. I'll tell you what. That fucking War Porn Industries, that, that, rec that mix it, best hip hop record I heard last year. Yeah, I heard. I think I heard. I heard. Um, I heard one or two things. I was definitely liking it. It's. I, I'll give you my my. I'll, I'll, I'll interject with my three hip hop records of last year. <laughs> that one. Why don't you fill us in? Heavy yeah. Metal Kigs and um, no Mayhem Loren and DJ Muggs. That 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 album. No Ridiculous. Doubt. Those no are doubt. the three best hip hop records of 2017. But yeah, it's funny that you do mention that because in '86, like hip hop is so big now that I forget. Like in '86, metal was the shit. Metal was like hip hop wasn't really like well there was both I mean it was mainstream like Motley Crue but there was underground yeah but it was like people Slayer yeah but still like I I, I guess that that makes sense you know you just Run DMC you know Run DMC were one of the first groups to sell multi you know multi platinum platinum yeah. Run DMC were big in '86 oh yeah, yeah. Well, obviously you know. But they but, had um, their they even had their rock you know uh, like absolutely it was definitely rock influence it just it wasn't. There wasn't like millions and millions and millions of white kids at that point that yeah. basically infested the market and basically, you know, they didn't become the major buyers yet. They were yeah still like kind of like insiders. Like, yeah, we're buying a lot of records, but, you know, until it got a little later, then it was like... They were pissing well, their parents off in other well, ways. Shout out to white people. Yeah, yeah no, shout no, out to white people for, for being <laughs> such a great demographic. So, no, for just, you know, <laughs> yeah, bringing the money. Uh, yeah, bringing the money. <laughs> For scaring the people at Priority Records. You know, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so then w when did you start, like, flipping it into hip-hop? You know, because I, I know you guys were doing some stuff. Um, there was life before nonfiction, right? Nonfiction oh, formed yeah, in, like, course. 95. We formed, like, 95. Um, and Search. We, Search was the guy. And for me, like, goddamn, like, those fucking albums, those, those two third base albums... Or re like Sam Sever was one of my favorite producers. Like those oh, yeah, beats. Sam, yo, those, yeah, man. I mean, that first third bass album was dope as fuck. Like, Words of wisdom. There's, there's, there was no denying that. People, yeah. you know, sometimes history, you know, people want to change history, you know, for whatever reasons or politics or whatever, but that doesn't that doesn't matter. The no. first album was dope. Sam Sever was dope as fuck. Um, both their flows, like lyrically and flow wise, like yeah, I fucked just... with both of them. I fucked with both of them. I was, I, I was feel, you know, personally, I was more of a fan of Pete. Me too. But um, but no, I fucked. I you know, I fuck with Search. But Search had had the business. Man. I used to torture Search. I used to we used to be in his truck and I used to I used to put the cactus on at full blast <laughs> That's while great. while he was driving. <laughs> and what what would he say? I mean, he would just look at me like I had 12 heads. He wouldn't say anything. He yeah. was just cool. I would just listen to it, like, you know? Yeah. I guess that's like somebody playing one of our bands. Nah, that nah. like, take that shit. Nah, he's cool. You know, I, I, I'd fuck around and torture him, but he was, he, was, he was cool about it. He's a sport about it. I kept it real with him. I told him. Um, so Search was involved with Sabak, right? Like, that's kind of like how it started? Um, I mean, as far as nonfiction, yeah, well, you know, that was, that was his boy. Me and Bill had been doing solo stuff for years. Me and Bill had a group. Oh, okay. Um in 92 called dead celebrities oh nice and um that's where a lot of a lot of old older solo stuff came some of the stuff that um eventually was on one of his uh early demos some of that stuff was like dead celebrities um it's just labeled wrong basically dead celebrity songs um, okay so, so we had that we had that going um we had department of forensics that was like 94 um that was me ill bill and his cat 10k who eventually wound up producing stuff for nonfiction, like four w's yeah, of course. I always um, hear you know, you know, him drop 10K. He's an old school cat. Um, what, what was influencing you guys back then? Uh, I mean, a lot of what was going on. I mean, there was a lot of paranoia going on. I mean, you had, you know, the year 2000 was coming up. There's all sorts of stuff. I mean, there's also a lot of, we're reading a lot of books. 
um, a lot of Malachi York, a lot you're, of stuff you're about a book aliens. <laughs> I read books. <laughs> yeah, we were just we get into a lot of books and a lot of um, off kilter kind of strange, all sorts of strangeness. You know. What about musically? What was what was popping around that time that was influencing you guys? Um, I mean, hip hop. Yeah, just the stuff, the New York stuff. A lot of stuff that was out. I mean, New York was was the shit at that yeah, point. Yeah, killing I mean, it. But I feel like even the subjects and, that you, that you were into back then. Yeah, is is becoming more popular in hip hop now, well, not this, and this, even in mainstream. Well, yeah. but now it's that, like it's mainstream. Not that, it's not that it's becoming more popular. It's flooded. It's overdone. It doesn't. It's 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 so, lost. It's, it's overdone and it's lost. Meaning. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. You can go up and do a record and say, "Yeah, the Illuminati is going to kill us." We're scared and paranoid. It's irrelevant now because when we did it, that was that was the first process to wake up to actually this is what's happening right now we're so in it there's no you can't do anything about it see they got you wedged so you can't do anything because it's either false news or you're doing this or right it's pizza gate it never happened yeah so now it's it's every now reality just become a simulation nothing yeah. nothing is real and when you did it you'd be like what is that and someone would go check out what you're talking about now it's done so much. You're like, oh, Illuminati. Well, I don't want to hear about it. Well, well I mean, you know, it, it's you, you have these like kids. They just make a demo. They put an Illuminati song. They have like pyramid tattoos all right. over their chest, and that's Illuminati. I mean, that's scary that that generation thinks it, that's cool to do. Mm -hmm. um, the shit that we rapped about was because it was happening. Plus, it really hadn't been done before. Very few acts were kind of doing it. We had, yeah, nah, you know, hey, that was it. Yeah, like, you but guys nobody was, you know, I mean. As far as the way we looked and saying what we were saying, yeah. nobody was doing it. In, in punk and hardcore, nobody's maybe a done it bit, before. As far as I'm concerned, nobody's done it after, before, or since. Never mm -hmm. happened. So I mean, yeah, groups like Dead Prez, other like groups back time that we're aware, but it's obviously different. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, we're not black. We're we were nonfiction. We were visitors in hip hop. You know, um, Search actually, you know, Search actually brought that up to me. We had an interesting conversation, and the thing is, like, people that are, you know. White people that are immersed in the culture, if they feel the culture, that's great. But at the same time, you have to remember you still are a visitor in a sense. You know that. You know you just have to respect the roots. You know, and I don't think that's. Mm -hmm. I mean, personally, I don't think that happens a lot. You right. Know? I mean, I'm not saying all white rappers should take African American studies courses. Right. But you should know who certain people are. If, right. If you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna do the culture, if you're gonna claim that, you should. You should. I don't know. There should be some kind of quiz, like somebody giving you, yeah. you know, somebody be like, "Hey, man, do you know, you know, like, you know, when you, you know, join like, a Facebook like, group, you got to answer two questions yes. at least. Yeah. You yeah. might as well have to." It's just you know, it's it's you know, it's always weird too, like the 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 group of people that don't really like hip hop but love Eminem. <laughs> just like, yeah, this what the large... fuck? What are you talking about? Like, well, how because, do you hate hip hop? And because like... they don't know it because he sold twelve million albums. So the pe those people who you're talking about, they're not even hearing it like hip hop. It's yeah. not hip hop. They, it's okay. just yeah. maniacal, wacky pop. It's like it, it, it could be Mary Poppins to them. It's yeah. not, it's not. There's no semblance to them of, of like, wow, that's you know, Sons of Curtis Blow. You know, absolutely, that, that's hip hop. Yeah, yeah. Not, they, they yeah, don't I know. guess they're 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 they don't consuming know what the fuck it on a pop level. It's how they're hearing it. It's yeah. also, it's how they're programmed to hear it. Kind of, I think. It always it feels like though when you grow up in New York, hip hop was always a part of it. It di it didn't always feel like black culture to me. And I I, I mean, you know, it's obvious what you're talking about, right, but right. it's weird when I would see like the rest of the they'd say, oh, you know, hip hop wasn't popular or whatever. And I was like, it just always felt popular here, and to be a part of the culture just felt like not like you were stepping into someone else's culture into the way that you're you're well, referring. Sure. Absolutely. Mm. I said, well, I mean, that's that's the beauty of it, though, in a way, and that's yeah. the way that it, that's the way that it kind of made you feel. You didn't really feel like a visitor. You felt like you were, you know, you were entwined, you know, just like anybody else would be. If you lived in Kansas right. City, that might be different. It might be completely like alien, the world you know? the, was like, oh, white rapper. But here, there was all, you know. Well, of course, it, but it, it but still, but at that, but even at one point in the eighties, that was still alien. Yeah, yeah, you know. So I mean, at one point, you you didn't go to the mall and, and see white kids into hip hop, right? And if you did, you you would get jumped. You right. know, you would be you would be hounded. You would be tortured. Yeah. So, now now it's so like, a lot of people paid paid ways and and paid their dues physically. Right. Died for your sins. So, died for your even, sins. Even like so punk rock, can, like punk rock, absolutely. you could do the same thing. Like, yeah. You know, like you you take. People that fucking wear like I don't know like anything you know even have a mohawk you know now no one would even blink an eye. Well, punk is safe now to me. It's not. Oh yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, it's, yeah, I wish it wasn't. As, I wish it was scary. I mean, it's just not going to happen. I mean, it's just. I mean, you had a like song called way. "Hated," so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that had to be a Gigi Allen it homage. It was. What do you think of that documentary? 
Horrific. Horrific, horrific. right? I watched it on acid. I almost watched <laughs> it. It was horrific, dude. Yo, I, I shut it off. I mean, I watched yeah. it again, but I mean, I watched it on acid. I was like, yo, this is... How old were you when you seen it? I mean, the first time when it dropped, like when it, I mean, when it came out. I don't you remember know, when it came out. And you know who did it, right? Something? Todd Phillips? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So he did like yeah. uh, old school and fucking, like he he did man yeah, movies. Yeah, that's, that's one of the first things he did, right? Yeah, it was yeah. like his college project. Right, right, and, right. And right, uh, right. I remember showing it to my dad. <laughs> my dad oh, wow. was like... <laughs> To this day, he was he'll always bring up be like, what whatever happened to that that DVD you showed me with a guy shitting on stage? And I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, that's some guy who killed him. Who we, we were yeah, just talking I mean, about this with? Were we? It was uh, somebody else we were talking to. Maybe it was Greg Prado. Yeah, Greg Prado. Yep, yeah, that's mm-hmm. who it was. Prado. Yeah, that's it. So, and I mean, then died for your sins is a shout out to Gary Bennett for Black he said Flag. Black Flag died for our sins. Exactly. So, which is true. Absolutely. Shout out to Gigi Allen. Well. With- yeah, while we're kind of this, well, you know, while we're shatting people, we'll make sure and hashtag Gigi Allen yeah. for this whole thing. <laughs> I mean, you know, I yeah, I love the idea of it. I mean, I mean, I wish his music was listenable. That would have been yeah, cool. that's the the thing. He like, has some catchy songs. No, his his first stuff, the old old stuff, yeah. is cool. What was great was like uh, years ago there used to be a show called Morton Downey Jr. Yeah, of mm-hmm. course. Yeah, sure. I mean, some people listen. I mean, they might not know, but hey, it was a show on Channel Nine. Right but yeah, it was a brutal show, and and I guess he had on Gigi Allen, and I remember just being like young, really? and I was like, wow, this guy's gonna. Gigi Allen's gonna be on you, and he would show commercials, you know, of Gigi Allen in between like Channel Nine segments, like like little bumpers. Right. Like, before, before, before Stern, yeah. So it was like Stern, and, and they would show him. They would show him like it was, it, you know, it was it was sort of like obscured, but they showed him like throwing shit at people. Oh, what? Like, I, me- I remember Morton Downey Jr. He would yeah, smoke yeah. and scream yeah, at everyone. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and cool. he was gonna be on the show. So then I guess the show starts, and you know, Morton Downey's like, yeah, uh, you know, Gigi Allen was supposed to be here tonight, but you know, it's not. He not he's not it's not happening we threw him out oh okay that's maybe that's we, why yeah, yeah. i'm like wow i'm like I, yeah i'm a little kid i'm like wow what why would they throw this cat out like what did he do and then they show pictures of like a hotel room they trash and like yeah this shit on the floor and like i'm like yo this is like really outrageous it's really yeah. fucked up stuff like and, you know if like, and there's you know, I'm 13 things, i'm like yo this is shady yeah. there's things that were <laughs> shocking back then you're like not that shocking now but throwing shit Will always yeah. be shocking. Twenty Honestly. years from now, yeah. it'll it'll be shocking. It, it's still gonna be shocking, <laughs> and it should be. <laughs> but yeah, I I, I still, sometimes I go into like YouTube uh, holes with fucking uh, yeah with uh, Morton Downey, like so he'll because like I go and it's like him versus like metal dudes, him yeah. versus like hard, Absolutely. like he's always like yelling, like the audience is always the audience like, the like moral lines finger. up, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, had Ace, he had Ace Freely on or the one with yeah like. Uh, like the porn stars on, he yeah. Had, um, you know, Ron Jeremy. And I think Jerry Butler Can- might have been on it. I mean, Chris, yo, it, shout it, out listen, to Christy it, Canyon. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this podcast should Legend. be dedicated to Christy yeah. Canyon. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I'm. It here. might be. It might be. Yeah. That might be the title of this episode. You're. <laughs> Gore Elohim. Yeah. yeah. Christy Canyon. I'm Christy Canyon standing. That's it, mm. man. She was my, that means, one of my but, favorites. Well, not actually, but yeah. The the beginning right there. So like, search was in. Like it's the four of you guys, right? So like, what happened from uh, there? I mean, I mean, basically, you know, Serge brought in Sabak. Uh, DJ Eclipse uh, had worked with Serge before. He went on tour with him. He knew him for years. They were friends. Um, Bill started doing something with Sabak. Serge got brought into it. I guess they were looking to expand. You know, maybe in Serge's mind, he was looking to create some kind of like futuristic Wu Tang clan, whatever. So at Bill's house, um, you know, basically just kicked it. He just wanted to kick it and asked me to spit, and that was it. Like right there, how cool, how soon before started. like Legacy came out? Not long. Um, I want to say maybe three months, maybe yeah. if that, maybe two months if that. I remember it was put together pretty quick, and um, the best thing about Legacy is in the studio we had, uh, you know, Search was kind of like, yeah, we're gonna, you know, someone's gonna come by, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty trippy. I was like, okay. Nobody knew who this guy was, and you know, in walks David Blaine. Oh wow, mm. that's crazy! So I was, you know, <laughs> we didn't know who he was. He was just, he was just some dude, and you know, Search was hyping him up. I was like, all right, cool, man. We smoked some weed. He pulled out some cards and shit, and he just, he changed, he pretty much changed the world, dude. He was like a fucking, like I couldn't even tell you what he did. You know, I mean, you can see, you know, people yeah, obviously yeah. see for yourself. He does that shit in your face. That's okay. not like. I saw him do it. That's not bullshit. It's not a scam, dude. I mean, you know, he might have. I mean, he's he's a magician. Right. That's the thing. He's not. You know, people. You know, some people like torn between saying, "Oh, he's an illusionist, an illusionist," or he's full of shit. He's a magician. Yeah. Like you're saying, like 
dark he's a magic. Like that, listen, that's 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 subjective, but right. I mean, he's a magician. Let's mm-hmm. put it that way. Like the shit he does, is it's real. not a trick. Is not what you're trick. saying? Okay. Not a trick. I mean, if he's in a room with you and there's there's just five of us here, four of us here. And you know he tells you to pick a card, and you pick might pick a card. You know it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna wind up in your closet in a shoebox. Right. Yeah. He you know? just dropped like a Netflix. And, you, and thing. you'll know, and you'll know nobody who's in your fucking house tampering with stuff to do that. Right. You know, you know a lot of this stuff is senseless. You know. Right. I mean it's it's great, but it's just he's he's like he's more of like a majestic kind of. So if you're like tripping out warlock. and smoking some weed, fucking that. That's oh, we smoke. We yeah, he smokes a lot of weed too. So that I don't know. Maybe the maybe the weed helped his magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, new rule. If like, David like Blaine's coming that. over, no one smoking. Just <laughs> new rule. But um, so he came by and you know we were recording and yeah, he was into. It. He's a hip hop fan. So yeah. Um, what we did is we engraved the B side on the vinyl. We etched his he etched his name in. So if you look at Legacy. And no tomorrow, the actual vinyl, the twelve yeah. inch, you'll see his name etched in on the vinyl. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Just so we can, just so we can remember it. You know. Wow. But, uh, yeah, that, that was a thing years ago. People would etch in. Yeah, you see all sorts of weird stuff. Inner's part of the vinyl. Yeah. I see like you know stuff like LSD etched in or like yeah. Good Time, like Sue or you know people just etching like whatever you know. Like, I guess the guy who's even, you know, the guy who's like pressing it, he might just put in something right. like a joke, you know, whatever. Um. All right, so like the singles start dropping. Like, what was the game like at the, at that point? Like, I guess it was just like Napster didn't hit yet. Like, people buying music. Just, everybody, everybody seemed a little fatter and happy. I mean, it was you mm. know people actually bought music. They cared about music. And fat beats. It was like, a it was a product. Yeah, I mean, you know, eventually fat beats came along. Um, what year did did they open? Fat beats opened in ninety four. Okay, I want to say ninety four. And by ninety five, they were already up and running. And kind of like, you know, carving out their own thing. So, you know, Fat Beats was a was definitely a big help for a lot of artists. I mean, that's um, how I first heard you guys. Yeah, absolutely. The scene was smaller. There was less artists, so there was you know, there's more interest and more dedication. You also had Stretch and Barbito. Um, you know, a lot Did, of that stuff helped immensely. Okay, because the scene was you know, and I hate to say the scene and all that, but just shit was better than the shit was definitely real. That, that's what it was. I yeah. mean, like you yeah. guys, I, I feel like that show, I mean, and it shows in the documentary that they just put out, like they just, I guess people just stopped in all the time and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's cool. I mean, the documentaries, whatever, I didn't see it. And it's like, I know our we, mutual friend, Nick didn't like it. <laughs> I mean, you know, from what, from, from what I heard, a lot of stuff was omitted. I mean, there's definitely, you know, situations that probably could have been in there. I mean, you know, I don't know I, if they have. I'm saying, like, on the I'm TV. saying, like, I, you know, I don't need a pat on my on my back, but like, I'm like one of the the, the second or third listeners. Period. I'm one of the first listeners on that show ever of yeah. June of June twenty second or something like ninety one. They went on. I want to say June. You could have rep nonfiction. You know what I mean? You could have could have you know could have gave us a shout out. That, Absolutely. That's keeping it really real because you know. But um, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. Um. I, I agree. When I was watching it, I was just like, "Oh man!" I mean, you know, yeah. I don't expect I don't expect a seven minute segment. Yeah, I'll, I'll say it for you. But it's like you know, we 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 existed. <laughs> I mean, it's like yeah, absolutely. You, you guys exist. You do a documentary and like not include nonfiction. I mean, it's kind of like why? why? Why would you not include us? It's like you're not including us for a reason. So it's like why would you not include us? We were right. on the show multiple times. Those I, are legendary classic. Did they moments. do their own uh, documentary, or someone else did it? I don't know. Uh, yeah, maybe that was the idea. I think they might have done it. I, I, they did their own. Like I, I yeah. think I could be wrong. So. Why am I asking Gore? I should be asking you because he always has all the little <laughs> inside knowledge. No, or no, I mean, um, yeah, I, I don't bunch, remember. I got exactly a bunch of useless the, knowledge yeah. that I'd like to use. So the mid '90s, everyone's buying shit. Everyone, you know. I don't, like I said, I don't even think Napster was out yet. But still, I, I think you guys had like a complete DIY method anyway. You know, you went and you unloaded. You were doing some shows by then and stuff. Um, so when when did the crowd start like popping off and, and you start realizing like people are really into this? Um, to be honest, it was kind of instantaneous. Yeah. Which was cool. Um, we put out the records and there was just immediate interest. We're selling a lot of those, you know. We started doing shows, um, and it just kind of took off from there. The were thing you guys doing the, shows locally, or we were doing local shows. We were doing shows in the city. Um, at that point, right what after Legacy, is? right after Legacy came out, we started doing college shows. We started doing the college circuit. Um, 
Rhode Island, Vermont. We did that whole scene. We did a weird show in Vermont. Um, I forgot what college it was. I want to say Lambda, Lambda, Lambda. I don't remember what it was. I should remember, but it was a really weird crowd. It was like Superhood, which was weird. Um, should we got there and people were drinking forties and shit? There's no security. <laughs> no, sec- no, no security. security you know what I'm saying it's like seven hundred people. I'm like, no, nah, maybe like six hundred. And there's just a rotten atmosphere. I was like, this is gonna be weird. Like something you know? could pop yeah, off. Yeah, it'd be weird. So I right, whatever. You know, we sometimes you can feel it in the air. Totally. Some, yo, totally. you could definitely feel it in yeah. the air. <laughs> Beforehand, you just feel it and you're just like, all right, man, whatever. I want to go home. Whatever. We get up there and like maybe four or five dudes. We start throwing like pennies at us. You know. Calling us like, you know, a white boy and this and that. Just like typical, you know, we're just like doing our thing. Like, you know, we're on phase. Like, we're ignoring it. Right. And after a while, like, the coins are hitting us. It's like we stop. I mean, you know, we're just like, yo, man, really? Like, what what the fuck, yo? Like, let right. us do our thing. Like, don't violate, you know? But it was like a lot of, a lot of dudes. And like, kind of like, out of nowhere, it was sort of like the Ten Commandments. Like, we're like all these, it was about 85, 90 people basically rushed the stage. You know, we were like, yo, Boy. we're getting the fuck out of it. We're out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We basically took off. And um, Who the fuck invited you guys? Um, You know, some some promoter? jerk some jerk off promoter. Yeah. With that, with that, I was like, yo, I was, I just, I'm not like, I didn't want to hang out after the show either. But at the same time, I'm not running. I'm not running from nobody. It's just like, it was 90 dudes. It's not, maybe yeah, 90. five dudes is yeah. a problem. I'm saying, I'm saying, you're talking at least four. I'm saying, let's be honest. We're talking like 50, 60 people. Yeah. I'm saying, like, I say 90. I exaggerate. I just, but it's just like 50, 60 dudes. That's, yeah, even that's, if 10 of those guys. There's, same seven, point, there's yeah. seven of us. There's not even, that's, there's nothing fair about that. So we yeah. were like, we're like, fuck that shit. Yeah. Nobody was strapped. Nobody had anything on them. So we're like, yo, we're not hanging around here. So that was Search's idea. We're like, all right, cool, bro. <laughs> but he, he meant well. So it's not, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not I'm not shitting on him for that. But it's like, yo, really, dude? You know, um, we did a lot of that circuit. Um, I mean, we did a lot of good shows too. Those singles started popping off. So Search was still involved at this time. Search was still involved at this time. So absolutely. he was like booking at the, at the beginning. You know, he was he was you know his um I think his outlook was he wanted to be looked at as just another member of okay. the group. Mm-hmm. He would he would just be and he had Searchlight at this another time. Another rapper, yeah. He had Searchlight, which um you know we eventually signed to. Okay, and that's how pretty much we got a deal with. A major label. So Searchlight is his production company or that's a his, subsidiary? That, that's his company. Yeah, that's, that's his, his company. Production. I think production he still company. has it. Yeah, okay. He does still have it. Yeah, he's um, fucked smart, smart dude. I mean, man. listen, to Search's credit, um, you know, we, we agreed we wanted to get it. We wanted to be on a label because the industry was different then. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Back then. You know, like, so, you know, the, the whole independent thing didn't pop off yet. Right. I mean, the underground thing popped off, but the independent thing, it wasn't popping off. Very, very few people were doing that. Right. So back then Geffen was you know, still like, like Well Geffen was huge. I mean he's still, you know they had a lot. I mean they had a they had a lot. Plus, I mean at that time their hip hop um the hip hop artists they had, I mean, the roots, large professor, killer yeah. priest. You know, we were like, Okay, this you know, we we had a meeting and we were like, Yeah, we want Geffen. Right, sure. And we pretty much you know, really to, artist to, friendly. To search his credit, you know, he asked us. He asked like, "What la- what label? You know, what what would you like to go after?" And we, you know, me and Bill, were like, yeah, Geffen. Mm-hmm. He was like, "Word, like, did yeah, you think it was going to happen?" No, no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't it's not that I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was going to happen. Like at, at, in the time span that it did, because you know, you know, he was like, "Okay, if that doesn't work, we need a plan B." Mm-hmm. So in the midst of that, you know, we'd have a meeting. And, and, you know, sometimes, like, we'd have a meeting and, like, he wouldn't really tell you, like, what the, di- you're just having a meeting, which could mean, you know, you're going to, you're going to go for dinner somewhere in some diner or, you know, you, you're going to drive to the city and, like, go to Russell Simmons' penthouse. Right. You know, so it's like one of those, you didn't really know with him, which is, like, he kept that, like, element of surprise, like, pretty, so, you know, he'd pick us up, like, oh, we're going to Russell's, you know, I'm like, Russell who? Russell like, who? Oh. <laughs> you know, he's like, oh, we're going to Russell Simmons. I'm like, oh. I'm like, all right, you know. That's wild. I'm still that. I'm still the kid who buys magazines and CDs. A sure. fucking nerd who met Eric B and Rakim in '89. Yeah. Who, you know. So I'm like, okay, no doubt. We're going to Russell's crib. Yeah, no doubt. So you know, we all got we all got amped. You know, we go up to his house. It's at that time it was on top of Tower Records, in um, you know, in the city. Fourth Street. Yeah, yeah. yeah Third lived, Street or something. Fourth. I think, fourth. Yeah. I think so. He had the penthouse. The whole, the whole, whole penthouse top. was Russell. Yeah. So. Yeah, this shit was far out to say the least. Yeah, you know, so we 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 run up in there, and you know, I got to say, Russell was super friendly. He was mad chill. He was cool. He showed us love. Um, 
And he was we, like aware of like the songs, like what the. No, nah, he wasn't aware of the material. He was just, you know, his probably his, his outlook was probably okay. Yeah, I know Search. Obviously, he's like yeah, Search. I'll is, take this. Meeting. Search is bringing some crazy white boys to to the spot to to see <laughs> what's up. <laughs> you know, and um, we all spit. I mean, we all rhymed. I don't, I don't think that was the best way. Sometimes because it happens sometimes where, you know, we've been in situations where you know it's like you're performing in front of them. You're, it's like eh. There's, you know, you'd rather them hear the music. Yeah. Do it that way. But, you know, I feel like that's the cool. thing they do to MCs is like, all right, spit right now. You don't say to Sam, like, okay, play a guitar solo. <laughs> you know? It's yeah, like, well, yeah, but people do it because it's, yeah, I mean, a guitar is different than because it's a verbal thing. It's, it's like, a verbal But it's thing, like, it's so know. out of context and not the right well, vibe. It's a performance. And it's, You're still, it's still a performance. So you're asking yeah. someone to rhyme. It's still, now I'm, okay, now I'm robot rapper. I was just having a, you know, yeah. it's still a guitar. You could just pick it up and I can talk and play riffs and, or whatever. But so anyway, so like we rhymed for Russell and like he was getting it, but he thought we would, I, I can tell he was like, yo, these guys are, guys are out of their fucking mind. You know, it, you know, he knew like, okay, yeah, he told Serge like, yo, you know, he's, these, these guys are dope. So I don't know. He's just like, yo, they dope. They dope as fuck, but I don't know. I wouldn't, I don't really, you don't I don't know. really know what to do. To do I, with I them. Yeah, yeah. I just, they're crazy, you know? That was cool. It's I a mean, fair point, you, you know? know like, um, it was more cooler for me just kind of like being up in his pad, just hanging out. And he's yeah. just like, you want orange juice? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll take some orange juice. Yeah. He's like, all right, cool. And like, you know, some Asian woman, like he had this like kitchen that like in the middle of like his spot, he had this like, spiral staircase that went down the floor that's like where the kitchen was so he's like oh just just go down the stairs and like it's like really far out so i go down the spiral stairs <laughs> and i turn around there's this like short asian woman holding a cup of juice for me yeah i just i, I take the juice you know i'm like all right cool i was like the best fucking orange juice i've ever had that's... in my life you know what i mean so you hear it here first right russell yeah, simmons you know, got mad i'm gonna work that into this he, crib hashtag orange juice so <laughs> the best part about it is you know i'm looking i'm looking like down the hall and i could see like this like exotic bedroom and like you know i can't afford the doorknobs in his house you know what i mean so it's yeah. like i'm looking I'm looking straight ahead i'm like this is a big like canopy bed and I'm like, yo, Russell, that bed is far out, bro. That's that's that bed is is really dope. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, you like that bed? He's like, that was Cher's bed. <laughs> Cher, like, really? I said Cher. He's like, yeah, it was Cher's bed. I'm like, you know, that's heavy, man. That's real heavy. He's like, yeah. He's like, you see those handcuffs up there? I was like, yeah. He's like, yeah, those were hers too. He's like, he's like, I told her to leave them there. He's like, she left the handcuffs for me. Oh boy. <laughs> I That's like, funny. I, I didn't I know like, people yeah, sold brutal. their beds like that, and there was handcuffs. Handcuffs were on the bed that uh, the, that Cher left. Cher on left the canopy the on the canopy bed. I witnessed them. I saw them. Yeah. That's that's worth. And people the trip. and and people do that all the time. Buying stuff like mm -hmm. people stuff and like they do that all the time. It's just it's weird, you know. I guess if you have money like that, you just want a story it's a, to it's, tell. That's a, it's a money thing about your people, people. People buy people's homes with everything in it. Put it that way. Right. Down to, to the, and like down to, I think you know, he's it's just, just he you know he's he, you know he's pretty well he, listen, off. He's, he's probably horny for share, and he's yeah. like you know at some point he's like yo keep the handcuffs right you know and it's you know and, a story yeah. to tell absolutely yeah absolutely and I'm Cher's, sure I'm sure he still has the handcuffs Cher's pretty hot right. and here we are talking about it how many <laughs> years later so he was right <laughs> um so so what happened with the like so, so you guys had a, a, a Geffen deal or interest. No, well, what happened is Search basically came to us, I mean, I want to say like a month later. And uh, he was like, yeah, he's like, yo, Geffen is very interested. We're going to have a meeting. So we were, we were, you know, we were blown away. We were like, wow, really? This is, this, that's a big deal. I mean, and, you know, the game was different then. And, you know, at that point, it, it still afforded you to have dreams. Like you could have that of like, not, oh, I'm going to make it thing. But, you know, you're having major label meetings. There's people interested in there's a buzz. So you're automatically thinking of taking it to the next level. Yeah. This is your career. A career, you know, yeah, yeah. I didn't go to college. I didn't Absolutely. go to music school. I, 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 I fucked up a lot of shit to do this. For whatever, whatever, for better or worse. So we're fucking doing this now. Right. You Sacrificed. Know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I lost jobs. I mean, just, sure. you know, going to the Stretch and Bobbito show. When I did, I lost my job for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So people don't know. There's a lot of sacrifices you, you have to do for anything. It's not just hip-hop. I mean, any kind of anything, you know, jobs, but... yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was a lot. It was it was basically a lot of sacrifice. So, the Geffen thing was really cool because you know we found out Search kind of knew the A and R, who was a woman named Wendy Goldstein, 
and um you know she's probably like 30 35 back then she she worked for the label since the 80s and coincidentally she signed the band grim reaper <laughs> okay so i kind of see felt you in like hell and like rock a, you to hell yeah, that was yeah. like, I mean, See it's, a little it's an obscure, door. useless tidbit, but I kind of felt like Yo, that's Grim my Reaper, calling, though. Yeah. Sometimes I, I, I bump a Grim Reaper still. Like, Oh, no, no, you can't you can't front on the first Grim Reaper record, even yeah. though there's only two good, two or three good songs on it, if but that. But they're really good songs. They're abs- like absolutely. vintage. See You in Hell, dude. Yeah, like See they're you in vintage. Is, See You in Hell was the shit. I yeah. mean, I, I'm not going to, you know, I was... When that dropped, I was all over that, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna front on that. Yeah. I'll play it for you later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just <laughs> added to the list of things. I need to. It's it's creepy, but it's good. Yeah. So anyway, she see you know she was the one who signed the Grim Reaper, so it was cool in a way, but also kind of gave you know it was like kind of a red flag. I was like, well, Grim Reaper came out in uh, 1985. Yes, you know, good record, but she signed them. So <laughs> all right, you know. Then I find out that she also signed Killer Priest oh, wow. and she signed the Jizza. That's right. Yeah, so that kind of that kind of gave me that kind of okay. gave me hope. I was like, all right, well this this chick isn't that she's not completely on. Was it Heavy Mental was on there. Heavy Mental, of course. Okay. Heavy Mental. That was an interesting story behind that too. That's we get to that later. But um, so she seemed really cool, and basically, you know, we were signed to Searchlight. We weren't signed directly to Geffen. Which sucks generally. How mm-hmm. does that work? Like, so you you sign to a production company. Yeah, basically we basically I mean basically we're his workers. The and, money you know, comes to him, he pays. You. Absolutely, uh, he wouldn't be you okay. know he wouldn't be getting that necessarily if not for his act. Sure. But the point is he you know that goes that doesn't the advance you know which was for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars at the time it didn't wow. hit all, it, it didn't hit our bank accounts but four that's fifty that's got, the got advance for the first record we got four fifty the... for the first record if we if we put three records out that'd have been up to five fifty god damn and then if we put six records out it goes up to like six seventy five full length wow. full length records yeah if if we in, in other words if we lasted and put records out and stayed with the Geffen contract six records in or whatever exactly I don't know exactly but like six records in we'd be, it'd be like the advance would be like six seventy five. Studio right. studio cost mad money back then. Of course it does. It did, yeah. but not you like it does now. Like but now you could you have could... flexibility to be like, all right, we'll take a little bit and put well, it aside. Well, for, that's how you had to do you know. it because if you know if if, if you know if you got four fifty back then, you're taking seventy five out at least. You know, just to just to for studio and the, you know features. Keep in mind, we had producers back then. You right, the producers right. got paid too. I mean. You're right. You could probably you know, easily blow through half of it. Producers, listen, producers got paid more than each member did. Yeah. I'll tell you so, what. You know, that, in that's... a sense, I mean, everybody else, you know, technically got more than we did. That's right. the one thing about hip hop that but, I keep forgetting. Uh, you know, yeah. Like, would, um, cause like we're in bands. So what oh, no, we, hip hop, absolutely. Yeah. Producers. What we remember sure, is producers. like, we're just poor people playing music. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but like with hip hop, like you have features and you have producers. Well, absolutely. Especially, well, absolutely. And the thing with the thing was once um once we got the album, well, once we were trying to put the album together, we wanted to have an, you know, an all star production lineup, something that was just as crippling, and brutal as like the first Nas album. You know, and yeah. we were like, well, how can we do that? You know, money. Um, yeah. Which I mean, search was well. I mean, you know, well, well, you know, thanks to Geffen. Geffen, you know, they, they saw our, our they saw our vision, and um, we were able to hook that up. I mean. Most of the, most of the, you know most of the producers on that we hooked up ourselves you know we had relationships you know we didn't need yeah. search for that you know we had relationships with producers um, you know it wasn't cheap but people don't realize that it's not like these days where you know you buy a beat for two hundred bucks or yeah. five hundred bucks even with that I mean you know I hear production was a big deal back <laughs> like, then you know. like uh, the the reason you know I, I heard havoc from Mob Deep talking about like uh you know pete rock charging them a certain amount of money like yeah uh and he was like i can't, we can't afford that so he's like fuck it i'll make my own beats and that's how havoc started doing production mm-hmm. you know yeah, no doubt. pretty yeah. crazy yeah i mean you know the game is different now people don't respect music you know so it's people have no respect for it so producers are not going to be able to get you know eighty five hundred dollars a track anymore right it's just not happening you know you know, bigger guys like Timbaland and stuff like that, they'll still demand big numbers, but it's not, you know, it's not the same. But, you know, we put the album together. We wanted the same production as Nas, yeah. you know, at the time. And, um, you know, so we started doing that. And, you know, back to your question, we kind of slowly realized, like, you know, the A&R at Geffen, this chick, Wendy, was, uh, she was pretty strange. She was kind of a strange chick. You know, we go into her office and, um, you know, I guess she had, like, long brown hair, but, like, she covered her eye with like 
her hair, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, like, you know, one day we're having a meeting with her and just, like, randomly, you know, like, her hair kind of just, like, fell over or just, like, and she had this huge dent. Like, you know, like, you could stick your fingers in her forehead. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, yeah, it's, like, a dent in her I'm head. I'm picturing the show V, like, <laughs> it's, it's I mean, reptilian? you know. Reptilian? I don't know. I mean, listen, I, I mean, she was self-conscious about it, I could tell, but she didn't say anything about it. So, you know, we're still, you know, was talking about something trivial, and she was like, yeah, she's like, I know you guys are looking at my forehead. Oh, wow. And I was like, no, I, I wasn't really. I was just, she's like, like, no, I know, I she's like, no, I know you guys were looking at my forehead. She's like, it's okay. All right. She's like, yeah, she's like, it's all right. She's like, it's, it was an accident. She's like, I was in a, I was in a cab. In, in like 1987, she's like, I was doing a lot of coke. She's like, and the cab driver was doing like 90 miles an hour and like hit a pole. She's like, I right, went through Wendy. the partition. She's like, I went right through the partition. Wow. I'm like, wow, I'm sorry to hear that. You I know? thought I thought maybe she hurt herself and it, I, I didn't know that you were serious that she had no, a was, dent in her head. Yeah, no, I mean, no, I'm not, I'm not mocking it. I'm no, just yeah, saying. No, yeah, no, I didn't know you I'm, were serious. Yeah, yeah, dude, I'm totally serious. Wow. Like it was, yeah, I mean, she, that's what I'm saying. She covered it with her hair, so... I could just kind of see like that was like, um, you know, like just heard, you know, the accident thing. That was kind of like the first inkling of something a little, a little off about her. Like, right. you know, um, then we'd have a meeting and, and she would say, OK, guys, you know, like, you know, we we'd have to play her stuff, you know, stuff that we were working on. Yeah. The stuff that we were working on. Um, basically, when we got the Geffen deal, we to search his credit, you know, search is like, listen, whatever happens, whatever, whatever happens. You guys should get a studio. We should buy a studio from the budget money, and whatever happens, happens. You keep it. Great advice. So, Fucking great thinking back then, too. That you know, that was that was cool, progressive thinking. Yeah. And whatever happened later on with him, or whatever politics occurred, whatever you know. For now, that's irrelevant. You know, we got the studio, and yeah. it was that was like you know, for me personally, that was a dream. Yeah. You know, because you know, making beats and you know, collecting records and doing that is something I was doing for years. But now it's you know. Now I'm getting this equipment bought by Geffen Records. So to say we were all gassed, I'm not going to lie, we were all gassed up for a minute. Yeah. But, you know, we were dedicated to making a good fucking album. Mm-hmm. We went out, we... Was Eclipse doing any producing? No, Eclipse, Eclipse, ironically, was doing production beforehand. And he never got back into it. Okay. You know, but I always wondered why he never... Because he's had equipment. Yeah. And he did a couple of... He did a couple of remixes like OC and so you guys didn't he did, have a, he an did a Nas remix. You guys didn't have an in-house producer then? We had 10K. Oh, 10K. Okay. I made beats. It was really me and 10K who okay. were really the in, in-house production. Obviously, Necro. Um, yeah, Necro so, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he did the earliest. I mean, he did, you know, he did Black all the Black helicopters. Yeah, it's absolutely. Just, so we'd have a meeting with Wendy and she would start, you know, asking us to play her stuff and you know, we'd play her stuff that we knew was dope, and she'd be like, "Oh, she's like, where's she's like, oh, where's the hooks? Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, oh, I, you know, that's cool. Like, where's the hooks? I didn't, you know, well, like, well, there is a hook there. There's a scratched hook, and she's like, oh, but I thought you were gonna do something melodic or something. You know, I'm like, like right there, like you see like a flat line. There's like it's just there's something like disconnect. Like, right. well, uh, we don't really have melodic singing on a lot of our songs. Yeah. She's like, oh yeah, you should you should try that. You should you know you should maybe you should try that. I'm telling you verbatim. This it's kind of weird. It was right. Well, like well, and in your head you're thinking. I, I, in my head, I'm saying I I want to die. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Like I'm not getting a mansion. Because right in my now. head, yeah. I'm thinking like a scratch hook. That's fucking perfect. That's what you Fine. do. Right. Yeah. Like and she's and she's like asking us like, so she's like, well, you know, you should try that. And she's like, I like that, but maybe. Maybe try something melodic, and now I'm, I'm I'm just thinking about Grim Reaper, but she's telling me about like melodic yeah. hip hop, and I'm like, yeah, we'll try that, you know. So like we kind of kind of left that meeting, and me and Bill are like, to flip. Yeah, that was weird, man. This was like that's that's not a good sign, man. That's like a meeting, you know. It's not. It was weird. So we're like, all right, you know what? Let's let's record some melodic demos. Let's just not not melodic that shit that wasn't us, right? But something that wasn't a butcher shop, something mm-hmm. that wasn't. You know, talk about like you know, fucking cannibalizing girls and acid and just you know, something a little more melodic. So, long story short, Necro made a few melodic beats. You know, like some Sly and the Family Stone samples and stuff, stuff that wasn't too alienating. Yeah, you know, um, some of those things wound up on the Green CD and shit and here Love and there. That CD. So 
we did that and like we you know we played him for her and she wasn't horny she just was <laughs> she she really wasn't she wasn't horny so it was kind of like yo did, did did you hear our demos did you do did, did you sign us do you did you what did what did you like from us like you signed us what 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 got you open about nonfiction? And it, was, it was like weird she couldn't really answer that she couldn't answer i that. mean we knew that you know i mean i knew her in search were cool but i didn't know that it was like now she was just like a can of wet paint like she's like a she's a brick wall she right. couldn't she couldn't say why why she signed us I, at that point i was like you know what i don't give a fuck like we're gonna do an album we're it doesn't here. matter if she i mean keep in mind she signed jizza killer priest large professor and the roots right. i don't think she knew their music either put it that way it wasn't like she's it wasn't like she out. was like it wasn't like she was like oh nonfiction I don't know weirdos and she's like bumping liquid swords and like she's bumping right. fourth yeah. chamber yeah she doesn't she didn't she's never heard fourth chamber unless you know because it was her record but otherwise she would never hear it that's crazy right you know and when you said the Grim Reaper before I thought you meant like oh you saw your opening like that your well, history well, with well, metal yeah, I thought right I thought like yeah that's because I bought the record in eighty five yeah. and the same yeah. girl who's like who signed that like there's some sort of uh, synchronicity, which which was not the case, you know. So it got progressively weird, you know. I, I'd bump into Killer Priest in the hallway, and um, this was like right when before Heavy Mental came out, and you know he he was like, "Yo, let me let me let me let me play this version." So I was like, "All right." We go in the conference room, plays me a version of Killer Priest of uh, Heavy Mental, mm. which is a completely different album, completely different version, and the version I heard was extremely brutal, like way different. Every track was like it's, I I can't even explain it. If if that version came out, that would have been historic. Mm. That would have been completely historic. You know, not that heavy mental was wasn't, but right. this was completely different. And I asked him, I was like, "What's up with that?" And he was just like, "Wendy's not gonna. She's not gonna put this out. She wants us to like basically redo it." I was like, "Redo it?" I was like, "Why would you redo that whole album? This shit is fire." The first heavy mental kid was fire. I mean, mm. so why would I'm like, yo, why is she asking you to redo it? So, you know, you'd see signs of yeah, that's, yeah. that's signs good. of cracking of some sort of you know weirdness. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's that, the A and R story yeah, for, from that time. Yeah. you always hear from that time. I mean, that, that people was, didn't that listen to everything. It's that was like, true, but I mean, you know, there was there was you know, there's pros and cons at that point. I mean, true. you know, I was coming up to Geffen, and I. I you know, I bumped into Courtney Love once, which was weird. I mean, yeah. it's whatever. People hate her guts. I mean, still interesting. Oh, absolutely. You know, I walked in there. Great. But what's cool about Geffen is like... First whole record's great. Being a, being a music fan, I became cool with um one of the uh, one of the product managers at Geffen. And he would let me go in there and just have a fucking free-for-all, dude, with the catalog CDs. That's I mean, yeah. I'd walk out of there with like 200 CDs of like... Oh, man, that's... Anything yeah. Geffen you could imagine. I can't even think now, but like... Every, anything and everything. So twelve copies of Appetite for Destruction. <laughs> I mean, that was cool. Just get you know that that was definitely cool. But you know, there was definitely a crack in the plan because you know, without like getting you know, without like getting too much into it. Before you know, we get in that, I'm yeah. just gonna take a break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come coke, damn it, these bags be longer than soap. Medina dope, hang the pole, back with a Mac and a ten speed, fifty eight oh two, fabric and roll with a pin speed. Awesome news like Conrad Murray, guns so flurries, never drop the mock so you could die in the hurry. I rock the new zucchini sludge floor, Mexican drugstore, cut you in your expedition. That's what the blood's for. My coat popping that block, my coat worship Satan, my coat loves being watched, my coat hard you're facing, my coat hugging the block, my coat. Death the station my cold, world, 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 no time for elevation. um yeah so all right wendy's getting a little weird and you guys end up bouncing like so what happens to that 350 or 450 huh. well i mean it's not it's not it's not so black and white it's kind of like you know you get signed to a label you know if it's a production deal you know the person you're signing to is 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 predominantly going to get that money it's going to go in their account you're probably going to get you know, checks for, you know, whatever would be agreed upon. If it's that much and there's four guys in your group, you know, you might get you might get fifteen grand, which was a lot of money for us at the time. Hell yeah. Even though we were all in debt. I mean it wasn't like you know, we went out and you know, we went out and binging and shopping. I mean we did a little bit, but you know, we were all in debt. We all had some um <clears throat> we all had financial issues. Um you know, the thing is the thing is with search it's like Sure, there's there was negative and positive, you know. 
that was negative, but then at the same time, um, you know, we'd have a meeting and you'd be on the Bell Parkway and, you know, we have no idea where we're going even. And uh, he would turn around and he just like one particular night, he turned around and gave us these passports. <laughs> That's crazy. It just, like, <laughs> just said like passport. They looked like regular passports. You know what I mean? So we're like, okay, like where where are we going? So we open it up and it's like the Fujis in the passports. They're real passports. And it's like they were like Praz, you know, Lauren, uh, Wyclef. And it was like, it was basically like invites to the score, like record release party. And they did this oh, big wow. extravagant thing Giant. on the Intrepid, you know, in Manhattan, on the, on the boat. So we were like, yo, what the fuck is this? This is like crazy shit. You know, yeah. it was like pretty, pretty crazy. So... You know, it'd be like weird stuff like that. So, you know, we we roll up in the party and it's like, you know, Wyclef is there and like a tux, like some crazy, you know, you're not getting you're not getting in there type shit. Right. You know, like I met Nas that night. I mean, so it's a give and take. I mean, it was a good night. I mean, you know, Nas knew we- Nas knew who we were. He knew who we were. He was like, yo, y'all, whatever. So Well, because he's you know. so close. I mean, like Search had, uh, you know, he, he what co-produced Illmatic, right? Well, I mean, you know, he basically... He didn't discover Nas, but you know he helped Nas get the deal. Um, so I'm I'm sure he. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, it, it it was what it was. I mean, it was a good night. So I mean, you know, you'd have stuff like that, but um, then you'd have stuff like you know money disappearing, um, you know, new cars being bought, mm. parked down the block because they don't want you to see the new car parked in front of the studio, and you know now we're playing that game. Of like now, like you're saying peace to somebody at the end of the night, and like right. they don't want you to walk out the door with them because right. you'll see where they're going to which car. Right. So now we're playing that game. Mm-hmm. So you know it started getting a little weird, so and then two weeks, been- and then and then two weeks later there'd be another car. There'd be like a Volvo, like a white Volvo. It's no disrespect. It is what it is. You know, it is so, what it is. And you've been like super. Well, I mean, the, the thing was, like I said, you know, to his credit, we got the studio. Yeah. Um, you know, he hired an engineer, which you know, this bizarre guy Tom, who you know, he had worked with some cats like EPMD, and uh, you know, so we had an engineer in there. We got the equipment up and running. Um, so it was, it was just there for you guys to just create. Yeah, basically. I mean, I was the only one making beats. So, you know, I went out and, you know, yeah, with, you know, I basically told Search, I'm like, yo, I'm getting the SP-1200 and I'm getting the ASR-10 and Sonic, which was the hottest shits at the time, you know what I mean? Do you remember the first beat I, you made in that studio? Yeah, I mean, the first beat we actually used that eventually got used for the green CD, which mm-hmm. was, um, I mean, I can't, I can't exactly remember right now, but it's on the green CD. I mean. Scum? It's, it, it's not Scum. I didn't do Scum. I didn't okay. do that one. It's, it's on the green CD. Okay. That was one of, that was the first beat I made on the Sonic. So Ge- Geffen starts going disappearing, and I, I think well, well, I mean, it wasn't so much that Geffen started disappearing. It's like we were recording. Like I said, we'd go to Wendy, we'd play her demos. She was unresponsive in a way. Yeah. Um, we then started hearing inklings of, oh well, you know, MCA is in the market, and you know, Seagram's at the time was, you know, like labels are going to be in trouble, you know. And we were like, we didn't really understand the concept. And then we kind of like understanding that Seagram's is going to buy out all the labels. And basically, if that happens, we're not on Geffen. It would be MCA, let's say. And uh, MCA doesn't have to accept us. In other words, if that happens, if that change were to happen, you know, MCA could tell us, go fuck yourself. You know, we're not, you're not on, you have oh, no so deal. They, yeah, they you keep have no who deal. they want. So you have no deal. So, I, you know, I was getting a little paranoid about that. But that wasn't really so much on the table. It was just more or less... A weird disconnect, mm-hmm. um, you know, the mismanagement, the vehicles, and you know, me and Bill at that point were like, we need to, you know, we we kind of need to figure something out. We might need to, like, we we kind of need to talk to Wendy. <laughs> we kind of need to just like, we need to go over this cat's head, basically, and it's what we did. And it's like, business wise, it's kind of like one of the first big boy moves we did, mm-hmm. because that's like that was that's a huge thing. I mean, when when you're a young artist, I'm in my twenties. You know, it's like, and you know, search. You know, we looked up to search. Yeah, search, just, search so. was an artist that we respected, and and yeah. we knew that. You know, and and you know, we respected Pete too. I was a fan, and you know, I kept it real. So, it was never that. It's just, it was, it was just, it was just not right. You know, what I'm saying like my son was young, and if if you know, you give him, you throw in his ten grand. That's not. Don't expect this. That's not going to last two years. We're all in debt. How long? So of course we're going to hit you up for more money, because we got bills. We don't. 
own a house like he did and, you know, vehicles and, you know, his family are investors and stockbrokers right. and, you know, he can take 10 grand, flip it, make 50 grand in seven months kind of thing. We didn't have that. We're right. from the hood. We're from the projects. You know what I'm saying? We robbed to eat. That's not, well, that's, that's how we grew up, you right. know? So, you know, you can give us X amount of money. It's not going to last us that long. I got a kid. So it came a point where, you know, again, we had to have a meeting like, yo, we, we need to get more money from this guy, you know? And the thing is, he was in the group. He was, he would get on songs. He was rapping on demos with us. He was spitting. Yeah. But weird stuff would happen. So we'd be in the studio, you know, maybe one thirty in the morning, one o'clock, pretty fairly late, you know, working on a banger, working on something pretty dope. You know, you know, his wife, his wife would call. Like, again, no disrespect, but his wife would call. We're in the middle of a session. He's, he's 45, 50 minutes away from his house. Keep mm-hmm. in mind, it's not around the block. Right. You know, and in the middle of a session, she's like, you got to come home because you got to drive me to the gym. Okay. Like, how far is the gym? And the gym was two blocks right. from the house. So she's making him, I mean, think, think what, I'm, what I'm saying. Sounds he's, frustrating. He's recording and she's making him leave the session to yeah. drive her 50 minutes away. It's like the crazy. Drive her to the gym. It's the craziest thing because here you are, like all of us are like, you know, musicians and like this is what you wait for. You wait for something like fucking Geffen Records to be interested. You wait for someone to be like someone like Search to notice uh, and to help you out. And then the flip side is, is like you, like exterior, it looks amazing, but like everything that's going on, it's like A and R's losing faith. Of course, well, yeah, it was like a, it was like a Fellini movie, sure. <laughs> um, at the same time, we were also helping his career because I mean, at the same time, he'd had a solo career that was moderately successful, but nobody was look, nobody was interested in him as mm-hmm. hearing him as a rapper anymore. So, we gave him that shot, you know. Yeah. As far as, you know. To being able to to reach, you know, our our like our like your circle, people, your yeah, our creeps, our goons. Base. Like yeah. you know, we were able we expose him to our goons. Yeah, and you who accepted him because he was because he was rapping with us because he was adopting slang that we were using. We right. I mean you know we helped him we helped him with, with lyrics. It's not that that wasn't a secret. Right. I mean not that he was he was was he was it's not that he wasn't capable, but. How could he be capable if at one thirty in the morning he has to drive somebody home to a gym? He's not exactly working on lyrics. It's not exactly. Point, it's yeah. not. It's not exactly a great work environment. Yeah. So, where, where little did, by little, he was. You know, like he wasn't. It started becoming like he just wasn't getting on songs. You know, so that, yeah. So there was like a, there was a you know digress from just just music, and then he kind of focused on doing like you know trying to handle business and stuff. He wasn't giving us money to the back to the point is we had to basically hit up Wendy. We, me and Bill decided we're going to go to Wendy. We go to Wendy. We, we pretty much told her, she's like, you guys got it. You know, you guys got to come up. This doesn't sound right. We're like, yeah, we went up. Yeah. He was in the office with us, you know, and he talked about awkward and weird. And it was just, it was, it was very strange. And she basically asked us, she kept it real. She's like, yo, what, what's going on guys? What's, what's up? Yeah. You know, like these guys, she's like, what's up, sir? She's guys are asking for money. Mm. And you're refusing money. She's like, "What's up with that?" She's like, "Why, why, why are you refusing the money?" And he was just like shaking in his chair, like fiddling, you know, n- knees knobbing, knees mm-hmm. knocking. He was like, "Oh well, it's it, uh, it, it's it's not that. I I get I, I gave them money already. I, I gave them money already." She's like, "How much did you give them?" He's like, uh, "I gave them I gave them ten grand." She's like, "You only gave them ten grand each." She's like, "You have the nerve to complain? They're asking you for more money." She's like, doesn't she's like, doesn't she like, doesn't Gore have kids? He's like, well, yeah, I I told them to just to to, to manage their money. Hmm. She's like, search, you gave them ten grand. That's not gonna last. That's not gonna last that long. No. The budget was four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, dude. Why would you Why would you only give them ten? And then it just turns into like, this is now a circus because these guys need more money. They have to make the album, search. You have to give them more money, dude. How fucking? Yeah, like, I mean, it's, it just, you know, it's just it's, a. A maze of conflict of interest. Unbelievable. You know, and you don't know it when you're young, but like when you look back, it's like the guy's in the band. He has the production company. He gets signed. Like, who's the manager? Where's here's, the here's, lawyer? Here, here's it, it, and aside from that, here's the dumb shit. Is because we've had meetings, and there was there was a certain point where when you know he was in the group, there was a camaraderie, and his whole thing was, oh, we're gonna make it, we're gonna take it to the top, we're gonna do this, and for a while he believed in that, mm-hmm. and then when he had it in his hands, he threw it away. 
he's a fucking schmuck. And right. I hope he hears this because it's with respect. You know what I'm saying? He's a fucking schmuck because we could have had it all. Right. We could have had a platinum fucking album, brother. And everybody knows that. Right. So we could have been a platinum act. We're a platinum act for people stealing our music all over the internet. Right. So we went platinum in that sense. But, you know, the real shit didn't have to get fucked up. It didn't have to happen. You know, even with what I'm saying is even with Wendy, it just didn't have to happen that way. Did he just like lose interest at some point? Is that what happened? I mean, I mean, you know, you could ask somebody else again. You know, you know what I say is my, <clears throat> it's my opinions. It's it's like my viewpoint of the way I see it. My yeah. would have benefited. My observation is my observation it, is but... he was brainwashed with someone. There's weird energy around him. How did this migrate over to Warner Brothers? Uh, because like I read, I think it was like on the Wikipedia that or or some no actually I think you did an interview. And somehow you brought up Lincoln Park, which I thought was a really interesting story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we we messed with Matador. I mean, that's yo. Ma- we, we'd be here. I mean, we'll, the thing is, like, we, you know, we'll, we'll give like an edited thing because sort of like we'd be here till three in the morning. But you know, Matador basically after you know the Geffen thing didn't work out, unfortunately. Um, Matador you know, the Records. Search made a mockery of it. Matador Records basically approached us in Fat Beats. They came to Fat Beats. They were looking for us. They were like, "Listen, you know, we love nonfiction. This is we don't give. This is what I want. Yeah, yeah. Because Matador to me, I love Pavement. I love like it's it's I great guys. There's no this. Yeah, it was just like the indie rock mecca. Absolutely, absolutely. So and and it was only you and Arsonist that were on there. And I would always think to myself, how the fuck did nonfiction and Arsonist end up being the only two hip hop groups on Matador? Yeah, well, I mean, they pretty much woke up one day after being fans of underground hip hop for a while. They wanted, you know, in their minds, they wanted the hottest shit out at the time. And it was arsonist and nonfiction for sure. I mean, you know, I mean, Cole Flow was around. Cole Flow were doing their own thing. Um, big yeah. up, big, you know, big up to LP. Fun Crusher, Mr. Len. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, they approached us. They came came to Fat Beats who were looking for us and then and they were just like yeah we really we really want to work with you guys and you know we really respect your vision and we really think that like you know you, you, you know our our label would be a great home and you know you look at the roster some of those bands you know I that you mentioned are cool I didn't listen to them but just have almost like absolute respect for them because mm-hmm. it's you know you have Gerard Cosley I mean his his history is, is, is ridiculous but um they were interested in us they put out Black Helicopters yeah and um, you know, it was our biggest record. They were behind it. They loved it. You know, we got along with the label. Everybody there was super cool. Um, I think it got to a point we we were scared that what happened was when we first got mad at though. They had um, they had capital. They were they were backed by capital. So when they approached nonfiction through that, it was like mad at or capital. Like, do you want to? Do you want to fuck with Matador Capital? Hmm. So instantly we were like, well, yeah. I mean, of course. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and in the midst of that, in the midst of like right after Black Helicopters dropping, you know, if my timeline is correct, the Capital thing with their label fell through. And once it fell through, we kind of felt like, I don't know if they did intentionally, there seemed to be less interest. You know, they, were, they, weren't, they weren't as horny mm-hmm. to really, you know, um, they, it, they, just had, they just had a different plan, which... You know, me and Bill discussed it later. It, it's a long story, but we should have stayed with Matador at that point. You know, it was we we kind of Bill ad, feel, ad, feel admitted, that way. Admittedly, we kind of jumped the yeah. gun because we kind of had major label, you know, configures in our eyes, right? And and, and, and you know, so we felt bad about that because those guys were music fans. Those guys loved the music, yeah. And out of, yeah. out of anybody that we've ever fucked with, we knew those were the guys that got it, that they respected it, right? And you know, yeah, that label. I, I think I think I think regardless, I think if, if we got paranoid <clears throat> or or nervous even for a second that they couldn't handle us, I think we should have held on to that. And I think it was definitely a mistake. I mean, you know, me and Bill admitted it was a mistake. Mm. So the thing with Matador was and I can admit it is towards the end, it's a weird thing, but basically I got their I got their limo service. I can I mean, you know, I can admit it doesn't matter, it's over with, but I got their limo service and we were getting off the label. Cool guys. I got the limo service and basically went nuts with it for a few months. <laughs> okay. Okay. And I'm only telling the story because it's just, I mean, you know. It, yeah. It, Shout it's out been to pretty Uber. Wacky. It was pre Uber. Shout out to, <laughs> I don't want to give the, you know, so I get, I get the, you know, we're sidetracked, but, you know, I, I get, the, I get the, 
I steal the number because it's basically left on the desk where everybody's like smoking weed and, you know, <laughs> people were stealing product from them. You know, I didn't do all that. People were doing other shit, you know. Long story short, I saw the, I saw the, you know, I saw the number and the code and, you know, to limo service. I took it. Whatever. Wait, so okay. there's like a number and a code that, you, yeah, that was, yeah. For that, people in the there. company could just Absolutely. use yeah. it. With, yeah, it's a limo service anytime they want. So, I don't know. I thought I was entitled this to that. This is the way this should be told. Good thought, on you. I thought I was entitled to that for some warped reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I take it. I do my thing. You know, I'm in Brooklyn. Whatever. You know, was, uh, you know, I didn't have a whip. Is you know, chicks around and whatever. Long story short, a few months went by. In the midst of all this, let's say there's a you know a Dr. Dre and Eminem that up and smoke tour back in the day. Whatever. So yeah. it's probably around when that happened. You know, I'd call the spot. You know, for a car. You know, I'm like, yeah, you know, just a car to whatever. So the guy's like, no problem, sir. You know, I look at my window. It's a stretch limo. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't ask for a stretch limo. It was bananas. Stretch limo, get in the car, pick up Bill. I call him up. And he lives in Starrett City, which is pretty much much the hood, you know. I'm like, yo, dude, come downstairs. He's like, all right. You know, I'm like waiting. He comes downstairs, looks outside. Sees the limo. Walks back inside. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yo, bro, what are you doing? I'm like, yo, I'm outside, man. Comes outside. He's like, yo, bro. He's like, what the fuck are you doing, man? He's like, well, who, where are you? So I pull a Jim Carrey, uh, <laughs> Dumb yeah. and Dumber, yeah. and, uh, and cut his spine out. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. I'm like, what's up, brother? <laughs> He's like, yo, man. What the fuck are you doing in a limo, bro? What are you doing in front of my house in this limo, bro? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Just open the door. He had, you know, he had no problem getting in the car. He's like, he's like, I was like, yo, don't ask, you know. And he didn't, he didn't say anything. We went to Staten Island. We picked up 10K. Just two chicks. I'm saying we just picked up a bunch of people. We go to the spot, let the limo rock. You know what I'm saying? We came out. The guy was there. Blah blah blah. Long story short, was a lot of abuse. A lot of but dropping that bitches like a off, getting of food, day. you know, weed spots. Yeah, yeah. Also, also, you, you could imagine the gauntlet. Yeah. Um. You know, months later, you know, months later, it didn't work out too well. You know, I get a call from from somebody in particular. You know, they were in the office, and, and you know, we're like, "Hey, man, what's up, man?" I'm like, "Hey, man, what's, what's going on, dude? Yeah, Chilling, man." He's like, "Yeah, yeah how, how's it going?" You know, I'm like, "Yeah, good." He's like, "Yeah, you know, I'm in the office." I'm like, "Yeah, man, cool, no doubt." It's like, yeah, it's paperwork in front of I'm me. I'm looking you know? at a bill. <laughs> right, you know? It, which, it, it was so long after that I didn't even really didn't even know. I didn't even just, like, forgotten about, you know? It's like, yeah, I'm sitting on, like, you know, I'm, like, about 120 pages of something, you oh. know? I'm like, what do you mean, man? It's like, yeah, it's like 100 pages. I was like, really, of what? Like, what, a contract, man? Like, what, you know, like, what kind of, what, you know? It's like, nah, man, not a, con- not a contract. Like, there's, like, 100, it's like 100 pages of, of stuff, man. I'm like, okay, what, man? Just spit it out. What the fuck? He's like, yo, why is there nineteen thousand oh. dollars worth of worth of um, cab rides and, and lim- limousines? You know, what 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 the fuck is up with that? You know, I was like, what do you mean, man? I don't, you know, uh. I'm being honest. I'm keeping it real. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't know what you mean. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, it's got to the point. It's like, yo, dude, what the fuck? I mean, I'm looking at the bill right now. He, you know, we'll we'll say he, you know. Mm. He was like, yo, we, I, I know your fucking address, obviously, you know. Why is there 365 transactsons, you know? Hmm. I'm, like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, nah, I'm like, that can't be that many, you know. And, uh, you know. That one and then, every, and one then, they, and then day for a year. <laughs> and, then pers- and then, you know, then person, you know, said person kept, he kept reading them off and, you know. After a while, I was like a mercy killing. I was like, for please, fact. I was like, no yeah, more. Please yeah. stop. No more, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so they, they just eat that bill. Um, yo, they fucking ate that bill. Yeah. Um, and thank God it didn't affect you know the fact that they they you know he took care of us after the fact. What's interesting is that there was a Queens of the Stone Age show at um a DKNY party or something at a at an airplane hangar. I want to say in like, two, like oh you know what's fucked 2000 up two thousand something like it's because I just it makes no like just a tidbit but they later on signed to Matador Records. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, we can get into that later. Yeah. My, my 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 bitterness towards certain things, but that that's irrelevant. But 
so yeah, well, I'm at that show and like I I basically seen the two cats. I see you know I seen Gerard and and this other dude from from Matador and I saw him there. You know I made the decision that I could either you know approach him or not say anything because they they were cool and big fans of music and I had a lot of respect for them and the history. So I approached him like it was you know and he was very they were very cool very, very cool. cool about it, very cool and, yeah. So you know I apologized and you know every. You know, people go through weird stuff. I mean, at that point, to be honest, I'm in a different place now. That was years ago. I was, in, I, you know, to to, you know, to do what I did at that point because they're cool guys. To do what I did, I was just in a pretty shitty place, to be honest with you. So I was just like, I didn't. It's not that I didn't care. It's like I knew they were nice guys. It's just like it didn't so much matter because yeah. it's like here we are. Like things were great. And now like we're off this label, you know. After Geffen, I mean. There's a certain amount of depression that comes with that when mm. it's like go from label to label and then once it's a major, you know, there's downfalls, but, you know, there is an emotional pact that comes with that sure. after the fact that you feel, you know, so, yeah, at some point I, you know, basically the point is I wouldn't have necessarily done that. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that now and I don't think I would have done that later. At the time, it was what it was. Yeah, I we, apologize, and there was no hard feelings. I mean, I just wouldn't. You weren't doing it to them. Not at all. You weren't like fuck them. You just not at all seizing not an not opportunity. Not at all. Yeah, we, I, but I, it wasn't even like seizing up. I mean, I wasn't. I didn't plan to be. You know, I didn't plan to really do what I did. It just kind of happened. You know. But, yeah, we just all do fucked up shit sometimes, and but, but years I, but later. I was, but I felt bad because they were nice guys. If it yeah. was yeah. another label, I, I wouldn't give a fuck. You know, to be honest with you, if it was like a real like conglomerate right. scumbag, you know, oh, yeah. you're getting three cents a record. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. They cared, you know. It, it, it was I made my peace with them, and, and you know, and that was Matador. And Matador, you know. like seriously, like I always like they could have had, they could have had that game because like to them for them well, to have. But you have to have them say what happened after the capital thing is, they were scared to put up money. That's the problem. Okay. We were like, listen, the black helicopter thing was great, and like you know, we got artwork from away from Voivod. They paid for that. That's right. And, and mm. the cover was amazing. They did certain things. They did promo stuff. They took out ads, you know? Whose well, idea we, was but, it was it to use the, the Voivod? Well, that was my that was my idea. Was it? Absolutely. Is it was absolutely. it your idea to have killing technology as oh, a song absolutely. title? Absolutely. Um no, no. No, I was probably that was that was Bill's that was okay. Bill's idea. I mean we probably talked about it, but he he probably you know, he made that. I mean, you know. I mean Matador Matador we definitely we definitely fucked that up, but I mean things happen for a reason. And you know, when that ha- once you know when that happened, we kind of got involved with an old friend, this guy T Ray, and um, you know we had the possibility of signing the Warner Brothers. That was an option. So now we're like playing that game again. Now we're mm-hmm. dancing. We're dancing to that, and it's like, you know, my idea was like, look, man, I don't want to do this whole charade thing. It's like we are who we are. You know, at that yeah. time, a lot of all this new metal was popping off, and you know, all this stuff was going on. There was a kid there. Um, what A&R year is kid. this? Um. I'm pretty bad with years around this time, but two thousand ish. It's probably yeah, something like that. Yeah, probably two thousand. Okay. It's it's ironic because everything else in my life, I'm really good with years, but that particular era, like time, yeah, it's just, just I'm not sure. Probably two thousand or maybe ninety nine. This kid Kevin was an A and R there, and um, he somehow got our demos. And we had a, we got a meeting with him, and in the meeting he was like, yeah, you know, everybody here loves your shit, and you know, I got these new guys, Lincoln Park. You know, they're, they're, they're a new band that, you know, we might be signing. And, you know, I'm like, oh, cool, man. He's like, yeah, we played we, we played those guys, your, your, your stuff. He's like, he's like they, they love your shit, man. They were, like, flipping out about it. And we're like, all right, cool, man. Like, yo, let's, I was like, yo, tell them, let's do something. Let's hook it up, you know. He's like, yeah, man, fuck, man. He's like, you'd, you'd really work with Linkin Park? And we're like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, man, yeah, sure. cool, man. Yeah, I mean, you know. What's the name they're again? They're doing, yeah, you know, they're doing hip-hop or whatever they're trying. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll do something. Cool. It was before, like, anyone heard them. Right. It's- yeah, ab- absolutely. So, we were like, yeah, cool. And, you know, long story short with that is, you know, I listened to Paper Cut from the first album, and, like, that's a non-fiction hook, you know? Really? Absolutely. Absolutely. Which, which you know, they got from CIA is trying to kill me. The yeah. whole concept, I'm paranoid. I'm looking over my... That's all nonfiction. Hmm. That's all you're playing in the office. So yeah. I mean, you know, the you know, they owe us some money, but you know, I'm not, I'm not calling, I'm not gonna like knock down Mr. Han's door, you know? Right. Yeah. Those cool, cool guys. No, nah, I mean, listen, cool. it's not, it's, it's not a big deal. It's just like, you know what? Let's, let's, let's keep it real, man. He's like, you, you know, you guys jacked the hook. At least try, at least, at least fucking, well, this fucking open for you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Hook us up, man. Cut. 
cut that weirdo shit out. You stole the hook. We didn't we didn't say anything. You could have thrown us a fucking check for inspiring you. You could have thrown us fifty grand. It's all good. I don't give a fuck, but it's like, come on, man. You know? Sometimes that's all people want is like, you know, when someone's in that position to just have somebody open for you. It's like, yeah, you know what? Just let it less. Well, I mean, we, we weren't looking for Lincoln Park to like necessarily help us, but it's like once they got no, bigger. No, yeah, once they course. got once they got bigger, I mean it wasn't like people become less accessible. But it's like I bumped yeah. into Mr. Han in a, in, a, in some spot in LA and it was all love. It was like, he was right. almost like bowing down. I'm saying like, he was really cool. So that's right. cool. It's like a mutual respect. Those guys are, are and, and, and that's cool. Listen, fans. Absolutely. So, yeah. but you know what? That's, that's, that lip service is cool. Make something happen. You know, yeah. like take us on tour. It's sort of like with Slipknot and you know, Slipknot, their whole thing was they, they would be like, oh, we love death metal. We love all the crazy stuff and we love suffocation and we like all this. Yeah, then take somebody out. You know, like take one of these bands out. Yeah. That you love so much. Take out immolation. You know, like the guy has tattoos all over his arm, the guitar player. Of immolation. Yeah. So oh. it's like, oh, you know, he was like, I mean, I know I'm going off on a tangent, but no, his first album, he's like, oh, immolation's first album is like my favorite. Immolation, you know, Slipknot are a huge band. Huge. Why wouldn't you take out immolation ever? Why wouldn't you why wouldn't you let them open up? Because there's and nine I mean, guys what you, what arguing. The, well, what are you not even like what are you scared of? Like they're gonna really blow you away and show fans how it should be done. Yeah. I'm not gonna front. I like I like some slip now. I'm not gonna. I'm not one of those guys who go fuck them. They got some, like, yeah. Corey's a good singer, that's, but it's like that's, everybody that's in the band being like, "Oh, take this, take that, take that," and yeah. then the manager goes, "Yeah, I'll decide." And yeah, the booking man. agent's like, "You guys just play music. I got this." Yeah. Well, I mean, Slipknot's a huge conglomerate, and for you know, but um, yeah. So, um, so you guys, all this time would would, would you know? I'm sure George or some people listening haven't figured out that that you know aren't too familiar you guys still never released a full length right we released the futures now that's a full length. yeah the fu- no i'm saying Sorry, you mean up to that? this point like you like oh, no. well no no we did the green cd and as far as non-fiction that was it that was it it was just basically yeah. up to up to this point yeah. of the up story point, i'm saying that's crazy oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. up to this point of the story you're talking about like you know matador and all that other shit yeah. it was until um I think Land Speed, which I don't know much about. And then I think it was under the Uncle Howie. Well, Land, Land Speed, I mean, the future's now, unfortunately, so everything came out of now, Land there's Speed. No, there's no full length. There's no full no, length. No, there's no full length. There's, there's just that always, banger. But I'll tell you, there's Black banger Black fucking, e- like, there's banger singles to the point where, like, and, and this is what I said about nonfiction. I, I said to me, they were, like, almost like the pixies of hip hop. Mm. Like, they just had the most quality fucking shit. Um, it, but up to this point, like, you know, once the future, like once that album came out, I feel like it might've been at one of those record releases and shit, but the futures now, unfortunately came out on land speed. Um, this is a guy who's a crook. He's a fucking loser. The guy who runs land speed is, he owes us thousands and thousands of dollars from, from futures now ripped the whole, ripped everybody off for that. Um, and he's a fucking pussy and he, uh, he's a pussy because, um, he did business with Cormega. Right, he put out two of Cormega's albums, and he did the same thing to Cormega, and Cormega's like, you know, like you, you owe me a lot of money, man. <laughs> you know, like, this guy's, you know, this guy's a known thief. You know, this guy Bob yeah. Perry. That's 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 who he is. You know what I'm saying? And I don't give a fuck. Mega was like, yo, you know, you're not robbing me. It's not happening. So really, I want to see a vehicle in my cul-de-sac in my driveway that you have 24 hours. You know, that's and this is word on everything. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Or there's gonna be an issue. Hung up on the phone. He got the car. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like he made it happen. So, you know, my thing was why are we being nice with this guy? Like, you know, we'd have in group arguments about why the fuck do we have to be nice to this guy? I'm like, yo, why can't I hit this guy with a chair? But he even, probably owes like, us he owes us a hundred grand, bro. I, mean, I, I not, don't know if this not, is a lame point, but could point, you just I mean, bring him to court? I mean, the thing <laughs> was, well, I mean, it, it's not it's not that easy because the documents we signed, it's sort of like it's hard to explain. We didn't sign everything away, but he would he would have the right to put the record out. How but it's sort did, of like how it, did he end up with the record? He just did. It's just, like, I don't even. I mean, gotcha. Certain things are foggy. We didn't yeah, necessarily yeah. want to. Okay, but yeah. in between, if not waiting, like okay, like it got to the point where fans were like, yo, man, where's the album? Like, yeah, where right. the fuck, where's man? The album? So we were like, but I mean, if you bring him to court and be like, all right, well, we'll take that would 20 take grand. That would take two years in court. True, true. So that's kind of like what we thought. Like you know what, we gotta we gotta make a move quick. Warner Brothers, we we tried that. We went up there. The person who you know brought us to the meeting to basically meet the president of Warner Brothers, Tom Wallen, a guy who has dinner with Beyonce, you know, at the yeah. time. So we got a meeting <laughs> with him. 
and and you know again we were advised to rap in in the in the office i was dead set against it i was like i don't want to go in there and perform for this guy it's just let's just talk about things let's talk about the future like what you know that kind play of stuff. play him a fucking I, song yeah yeah, yeah it's like play the music yeah. this guy wanted to do both so we you know we go in there and we basically did that i played the monkey dance and you know tom liked the music but i don't think i don't think he saw like in his mind you know i mean new metal was also in you know we were you know we did a song with the Deftones. You know, we knew a bunch of people from the scene. Right. So I don't know what hmm. he necessarily thought. He might have thought like he might have been looking for like a Limp Bizkit hook with like some rapping, some minor rapping, like non-talented sequiturs. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, just make a hit. I don't know if he was looking for that. Um, the vision was not presented properly. Okay. And, and you know, when you have a meeting with somebody, you know, the president of Warner Brothers, it's usually one guy that, that navigates and everybody shuts the fuck up and doesn't say a word no matter how much you're burning inside to, you know, because your future is basically sitting in front of you with whatever this guy is kind of negotiating in front of you. So you might be gritting your teeth. You can't say anything about can't it. say anything. Is that one of the biggest regrets in my life? Absolutely. Yeah. Not standing up and basically navigating the meeting, which really would have been breaking reality at the point because we were younger and it's just not, you know, these guys are a little older yeah, and a little more seasoned business, but it doesn't matter. Like, you know, yeah. I regret not, saying what the fuck it is not let this guy misrepresent us and in turn didn't work out so again now Warner Brothers didn't work out so like we we had Geffen we had Matador Landspeed this fucking loser it got to the point like one disappointment after the other yeah. and in the midst of that trying to keep momentum up and, and not and not everybody just be depressed we had equipment but now it's like we're recording but we don't really know what we're doing right. you know? For so, what? Eventually, so you know like I said we eventually you, put out the do, futures now do you and, think and, today like let's say this happened in 2018. Like you, you could just do it yourself, right? Well, that's the thing. But and again, that's that's actually what I was getting to. Okay. Um, you know, the mistake we made is because we were so fucking horny for major labels. You know, it, it, it's hard to explain. It's like we went through so much foreplay with them. We got used to, you know, meetings. They put us in like you know five star hotels and they get cabs for us. And it's nice. You know, I'm just saying we got we we were like yeah we kind you know we did like ounces of weed for us left in hotels that kind of thinking of like okay yeah so we're f- we're fucking with this this is like what yeah. we want it's like you finally want it people yeah. bought yeah. records at the time yeah. so f- so to have those fucking dreams and to have that reality you wanted is very feasible yeah, now sure. you say that it's like what do you mean you're yeah. not getting a deal what kind of who's like it's not happening you're not making it but then it was very fucking right. real so. You know, we had those aspirations. Unfortunately, those aspirations kind of like got the best of us and kind of, we should have, what we should have did is we should have said, we're putting it out ourselves. What I give Necro credit for is, you know, while we were scrambling for major labels, he was like, you know what? No labels want me. I'm a fucking, I'm a pariah. I'm just going to do it myself. Yeah. So to his credit, he did the independent thing before we did. Right. And we were still, we were still horny for the major label thing. He was, he was more just like, I'm a freak. I'm just going to just fucking, I'm going to do it myself, which worked out great for him. Yeah. So, but even the major labels back then, the other part of it was the distribution. So, well, that if, was, that's why, I mean, that's why we also desperately so needed to have a major label. Yeah. Because it's it just, not just you know, like, oh, I want to be on Geffen. It's like, I, I need their distribution networks because you could put it out yourself, absolutely. but how is it going to get all over the fucking well, world? It's, just, yeah. Yeah. it's and the chain distribution. Stores, chain it's like, and distribution. I, absolutely. I, I don't need, hotels but i need your distribution and everything that you right. know and that's right. why you know we all looked towards major labels back then because it wasn't it wasn't like uh, you want to necessarily be on mtv you just can my record be everywhere well, those, and you're the only ones that know how to do it no youtube back then yeah there right was no, there was no We're talking there was no making money from ago. from he was video on plays what label you on TVT? tvt records yeah he was on tvt they had, TVT. They had blunt records they had you yeah know, I, Gotti remember, I remember and, that i remember yeah. that and I'm we were right. on like a subsidiary of TVT okay. that had a, like a new hardcore label. Okay. TVT had, uh, you know, Nine Inch Nails and yeah. they had nothing records, DMX, Marilyn Manson, Irv Gotti and all that. They, they had Seven, seven Dust, Dust. yeah. Right. So, yeah so we toured tons with Seven Dust. No doubt. No yeah. Doubt. But yeah, it was, you know, they were an independent label, but they sort of like felt like a major. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah they were making some noise at one point, I remember. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I what mean, you, so we were, you know, we were sort of like, kind of like at one point, almost getting, you know, lumped in with certain groups or certain bands, and you know, like we weren't, we were on a rock group. We did, a, we did a couple of, rock, of like metal remixes, 
with with the, you know, like Ste- yeah like Steph Steph from Deftones. Uh, yeah. How did my that, boy Christian? How huh? how'd that come about with, with Steph? Uh Steph pretty much uh we did a, we did a track with T Ray, the CIA is trying to kill me, the remix. And uh you know, T Ray just thought it'd be a good idea because uh Steph smoked a lot of weed. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we were we you know we were in his house and we were recording and, and he came over. We smoked weed and that kind of transpired. And um, it worked actually because like a lot of times if you mix if you mix it too, it just like never sounds right. Right. Like even like it just I don't know to me yeah, personally. No, yeah, most of it, most of it doesn't. I but mean, I've never really heard much new metal that ever sounded good. To be honest, no. With you. Right. And but like when you listen to to the guitar on CIA's trying to kill me remix, like I'm like okay this. Like this actually works. So. Well, it's, well, the thing is, it, it works because it, it's actually pretty heavy. Yeah. It's actually the guitars are actually tuned pretty lower, and I actually made them make it slower, so it's a little more sludgier than, okay. than it was, especially on like the chugging parts later on, where I, like in my verse. So, um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, originally we were gonna get Chino on it. That was the idea, but I mean, I, I mean, he was either busy, you know, whatever happened. Right. So we did it that we had a whole, we had another even a hook too, like a possible hook. I was pretty similar to, to the original if, you know, he was going to come down, but that didn't happen, which was fine. We did that. It came out great. Um, we went to do a video for that. Something happened exactly. Um, you did the video for, because, I mean, you you did get the uh, we did rock for, stars. We, we did the rock stars. Yeah, with DJ Premier. Yeah, we did that, which was basically just us kind of going to Manhattan and, you know, again, just smoking a shitload of weed and just like fucking with people on the street and. Being blessed with that mm. primo beat, man. That's that's like I didn't I didn't like it at first. Really? Yeah, I didn't like it at first. I, a lot of people around us were getting not a lot of people, but the people were getting primo beats, getting harder ones, getting doper ones. I thought were more suited for us. Okay. So when I heard that, I was like, it kind of it's cool, it's musical. Yeah. But it has to kind of has to grow on me. Okay. So I kind of to be honest with you, I kind of had a hard time writing to it, comparative to what I thought kind of was going to be the primo vibe. You know, what I mean, like some it's like some CNN. Like you know, okay. like some heavy, you know. So it, it's cool. I'm, I, you know, it's. I mean, it's one of our biggest songs. People yeah. like it. I'm not discrediting. I'm not saying I don't like it. But it took me. The beat took me a second to kind of, okay. kind of grow on me. You know. Yeah, we're. I mean, we're we're just basically finishing up. The future is now. So like the record comes out. You guys are doing the tours. I guess it's not much longer. And actually, it's been like four, a few years later. And then I guess like the inevitable breakup happens. I guess like, did you guys just burn out? Or you guys just kind of I mean trying it's, kinda, to do solo. it's, like kinda, it's kind of one of those things it's, it's, it's we'd be here till five in the morning it's yeah not, okay it's literally impossible we, to, at this rate we might be <laughs> yeah it's, it's literally impossible to break down everything everything would happen there's a lot of there's a lot of disinformation a lot of miscommunication put it that way some of it was warranted 95 percent of it wasn't warranted made no sense if somebody wants to do one thing you know you can't discredit somebody to that extent and then people going on smear campaigns it's like that doesn't you know so that happened. I was, I, you know, I chose not to feed into that because, you know, every every rapper has haters and people hate them for a hundred reasons. But, you know, there's still a social media thing, though, that it's like, you know, it's, I'm not going to say it's, it's I'm not going to say I'm hacked. It's like I'm constantly hacked. But there's just something, you know, there's something else with that, too. But, you know, which I can't really put my finger on. But it's just weird. It's like, do I delete all my social media pages or? You know, like uh, I guess the, the the one solo record comes out in twenty four uh, tw- uh, two thousand four, the art of dying, and then from there, like you know, the the group breaks up, and like nine years later, Electric Lucifer comes out. Right. So it's like a nice nine year gap. I mean, uh, you know, I think we we talked off off air where you said you were still probably creating music. So, um, what what was that gap like in in creativity? Well, I mean, pretty much the first year. After the breakup, I mean, I really didn't, you know, I really didn't really want to do anything. I mean, to be honest with you, I was completely nauseated and turned off to really want to do anything. Because the thing is, people wouldn't even care to, like, actually do research and see, like, you know, if it's like, if somebody says the sky is fucking, the sky is, you know, fucking yellow, and people just say it's yellow. People believe it. It's very, it's very yeah. easy to believe a lie once somebody works really hard at it. Lies were spread basically to, to you know, ultimately end my career which never happened lies so like, within the group or well, I mean, outside lies, influences you know, outside you know not anything any anything that happened it's never i mean the actual group breakup was just a me and bill issue my issue okay. with with someone else my issue with necro was completely different okay it appeared to the public like it was one big fucking cancer and this 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 i was a bad guy there's more to it i don't want to get into it yeah. but 
it's a lot. It's a lot. Like put it this way, I was, ex- you know, I, I was, I've been ex- an extreme gentleman, and it's like if I was to sling mud, you know, I'm over that. You know, I was a lot younger. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I mean, it's a past. But, but to be honest with you, to go back to what you're saying, what, what I think sucks the most out of it, and it, it's not about me or this and that. The fans, the fans lost out, and that's yeah. really, and that's, and that's the shitty part about it. That's because it's like as a music fan and somebody who, who, well, you know, who like loves certain bands, like my whole, you know, certain, you know. You feel like you're at one with them. It could be if it's Iron Maiden. It, it doesn't matter who it is. So we, we, you know, we've had over the years people who are diehard fans who like were absolutely crushed. You know, I think yeah. that's what I think that's what nobody grasped. And you know, it's like I'm not you know pointing fingers, but I think certain people just were like cold to that completely. Like, how could you do that? Like, how could you, you you know, especially over? I'm saying what happened was unwarranted. It didn't. The time didn't fit the crime. Whatever. And even that wasn't, that was a misconception. Yeah, so now a that happened. Huge gap. A, a huge gap. But huge. going back, I'm saying it's the fans that got fucked out of music. Me? Yeah. Of course. No, but, Sam but, got but, fucked. But I got me, a fuck but, deal. You know, yeah. but we, all, we all did. I mean, me too. I mean, as a fan, I wanted, it wasn't like I was saying, I don't want to make records. I was making music, but you know what? You want to make me the, you want to make me the fucking bad guy. I'll be the bad guy, even though yeah. I, I'm not. So it's like, people can say, oh, where were you? Motherfucker, I always been there. You weren't you weren't checking for me. Look at YouTube. I have YouTube songs from 2007, 2009. Not full length albums. I've had a couple little mixtapes in at Coffin yeah. Syrup. But don't say you you know check it yourself. You weren't checking for shit because you wanted to dick ride somebody. Mm-hmm. That's but you just how the game is. No one's gonna think for themselves. People love other artists, but they can't because they're not. There's there's a stigma. And people worried about this guy thinks and he thinks that. And his crew thinks that, and we can't like him for that. I can't. It's all. It's all playing mind games. So it's crazy. You know, nobody ever has the power to destroy my art. Not because just because I'm built for this shit. I've been doing this longer than longer than anybody. That's not gonna. That it, that doesn't change. So Electric Lucifer like comes out right. That's 2013. I think there's like 22 songs on it. Something so, like that. Something like 20, that, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So was it hard? You know, because I'm sure, you, like you said, you were creating all these songs in that time. Was it hard to pick those 22, or w- did, the, did the right 22 make Electric Lucifer? Well, yeah, well, I did. I did a bunch of songs. I did. I did quite a few more than that, but um, I tried to pick the best ones. I still think that it's cool, but it's too long. I think it's 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 like 76 minutes. I but I did have something to prove, and I think I wanted to make a point by saying like, oh, I'm going to come back and do this, and I'm not going to do 12 songs. But it's yeah, it's you almost know, I'm not like doing a thirteen double songs. Album. I'm not. It is a double album. Yeah. it is a double album, and um, and and it made it sh- up it for for the time. Absolutely, but and, you know, and I'm I'm trying to put that on vinyl, trying to re-release that, so it would be it would be a gatefold double vinyl. I didn't want to cheap out. I didn't want to just do ten songs of regurgitated garbage like a lot of motherfuckers do, and you know. So I did an album. Slept people slept on it anyway, which is surprising, kind of to me, honestly, to the extent like from a fan's perspective, for me, just not even you know, just from Joe Schmo, like wow, that album came out and that's that's all the love it got. Like mm. really, like I'm not saying because it's mine. I would say if it came out, and it sucked. I'd be like, yeah, I really, like I don't, I don't, wouldn't want to listen to Art of Dying straight through it. Do you understand what I mean? I would. Yeah. There's, there's there's parts that make me cringe. Okay. This is different. So it's like now you have 22 tracks of Raw, and like this is with some know, really good like, uh, like videos saying, attached to it. It was okay. I mean. Did you do one at uh what Kings Park? Yeah, right? I did one at Kings Park. I didn't I didn't like that one. I don't like the one that came out. I don't it's cool, it's just not to be honest with you, and like, you know, I'm not shitting on nobody. It's not finished. The editing job sucks. Um, the editing job's it, a little it's, weird. it's 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 not you know, I would take it down, but I just think cause there's cause somebody did I'm saying somebody did a couple of hours of work into it. It's a second away from like as we speak, I'm thinking about ripping it down. So I don't I don't know. I'm not sure exactly, but I mean I'm saying Yo, it's get, cool. watch that now. <laughs> I'm saying it's cool you like it. It's just not not the way it came out, and so I wouldn't say I did like a promo video run properly for that album. But uh, I want to re-release it. I want to put it on vinyl the right way, have it remastered again. You got tra- uh, I mean tragedy again tragedy on there. Yeah, tragedy's on there. And um, uh, young dirty bastard. Yeah, young dirty's on there. Yeah, young dirty is. Uh, he, we were thinking about reaching out to him. You yeah, because our, our friend uh, Jeff, Jeff from Raised Fist Propaganda. Jeff, wait, I think do I, 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 Pliskin. I think I know Jeff. Chances are you do. I think I know Jeff. Oh, I'm doing a matinee for him at Knitting Factory May 27th. Thank there you. There you go. I'll shut myself out. We're actually, I, I wrote him about doing an interview because okay. he has the new uh, uh, movie with um, Angela Moore from Fishbone. 
Okay. So Nid getting a lot of love. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, we did Electric Lucifer. You know, it's kind of one of those records someone's going to discover 15 years, you know. We're, we're, still, we're still here, which I doubt, but, I mean, someone's going to discover it later. The lyrical content is always, like, what I like about what you do, like I was telling George, it's like, it's almost like this pop culture, like, yeah. with all the dark parts, like, when you, like, fast forward through, like, like, if you sat down and watched CNN's, like, fucking year-end decade, that like... All your references are fucking like it, it's like a snapshot, man. It's it's crazy. Like a lot of the it's references. It's a pop culture nightmare. It's like this uncontrollable. I can't really explain what it really is. It's not really, you know, because it's definitely some other shit. And it's like sometimes I wonder. I'm like, yeah, man. I'm like, I wonder if people are getting it. Like it's interesting. Like Art of Dying came out, and we were doing the show with us and the Mortal Technique, and you know, we did our thing. I did a solo show, and you know, he comes up to me. He's like, he's like, yo, he's like, yo, all the dying, all the dying is dope, man. This shit, this shit, this shit is raw. I was like, yo, man, good looks. You know, this is before he blew up. He didn't. He wasn't. Mm-hmm. You know, he was just like, he's like, yo, this shit is dope. I was like, yo, I appreciate it. He's like, I'm not sure. He's like, I'm not sure people are necessarily gonna get it though. Like, I was like, I was like, no, they're not gonna get it. Absolutely not. You know, but just yeah, like, a lot of references. It was just interesting. You know, it's I just never kinda, heard anybody rap Desmond Child in a song before. <laughs> Oh Jesus! You, you know what I'm saying, yo? Because yeah, Desmond Child was like the the man song. Like I anytime mean, you read Head Parader magazine in like the 80s, you look at the back. It was always like Alice Cooper and Desmond. Well, like, again, this this podcast could have been about Desmond Child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, no, I didn't think anybody would check me about Desmond Child tonight. <laughs> you, I mean, you know, again, Sam, Desmond Child is just is is uh you know it's just that's overdoing it. You know, yeah. I, 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 mean, I like to overdo it for the you know, because you, you, like the- you and two you it's only going to be you and like two other guys from Wisconsin <laughs> yeah. know who the fuck Desmond Child is, and even if you tell people, they're like, yo, who the fuck cares? Yeah. Oh yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Like, but 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 no, no but that's I know that's what's hard about it. But that's what's hard about it. Sam he cares. Yeah. So, Sam cares. Yeah. yeah. That that like you know obviously you dropped Joe Spinell. There's a few things. Even like yeah, this Weezer. Car- like you said, soft like Weezer, and I'm like, man, I fuck with Weezer. But yeah, I dude, totally yeah, feel dude, you, yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. So did I. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so no, I wasn't like you know. Yeah, I said soft yeah. like Weezer. I'm not. I wasn't dissing. You know, I mean, it's a metaphor, but I, I fuck with Weezer. Yeah. Right. First two albums. First two albums. Ah, some later stuff. Yo, I, I can, I'm your daddy. Yes. No, that, hold on. A couple I'm of, your daddy is okay. The the funny thing about uh, Ratitude, okay, um, I'm your daddy, great melody, great chorus. The lyrics are fucking shitty. And, and then the first song is actually, speaking of Desmond Child, was co-written by Butch Walker, who is like the newer version yeah, know, but, of yeah, Desmond yeah, Child. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. The first, like, and then that's the record that had little, uh, Lil Wayne on it, which was like mind blowing. I'm like, yeah, how yeah, yeah. the that, fuck that did this? Weird. But you know, those those rounds of Weezer records was them at war with their label. Those four, like Death to False Metal, the, oh, the yeah, 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 yeah. They, would, they did those, supposedly, those records purposely bad. They threw them together very quickly, supposedly. Well, everything's so going to... I heard those records. I'm saying I like some of those records, but, everything, but, but those were spite work records. Sort of like, you know, like when um, like Neil Young or something, like okay. 77. Like Prince. The, yeah, like, you know, Neil Young had that contractual thing yeah. where he produced purposely bad records. For yeah. Them. That's what Weezer were trying to do. Oh, they worked. Hmm. But, worked, but, worked but I very liked, well. But, yeah, Good job. so that's, that's kind of... Weezer, but no, I wasn't dissing Weezer. No, 2014's Everything Will Work Out. Uh, in the end, I think that's like the best post-Pinkerton Weezer album, if you ask me, but... I, I, would, I would agree. Yeah, shout out to Desmond Child, though. Where, where, and Butch Walker. <laughs> shout out to Rivers Cuomo. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to Mike Mavs in the, in the building. Yeah. Shout By out the way, to the homie. Time, someone says, shout out... I do the social media stuff, so I think... Hey, hey, got a fucking hashtag. Got a hashtag that shit. <laughs> so, um, but okay, yo. So I, I just want to get us up to date real quick. So from from there, um, the group gets back together. I know because I'm at the 20 year anniversary at the Highline. Right. I think you might have lost your voice, but it was still good. Why, why wouldn't I lose my voice? No. Out, of, <laughs> out of a reunion show in front of yeah. Why wouldn't I? No, before. Right. <laughs> Whenever I lost yeah. my voice, why the fuck <laughs> totally. wouldn't? What's the difference? Of course. Listen, oh, no, no, I was dude, I was throwing chairs that night. I was fucking heated. Yeah, it that, was, that was that wasn't that wasn't cool to lose my voice in fucking New York. You know, and I prepared for the show. It wasn't it's nothing like, worse. It's it was well, the worst. You lost dude. your voice because of a cold or just yeah. I had a, I had a cold, but I was taking echinacea. I mean, I was like, I, I mean, I was I was doing the right thing. It just fucking went out. It was like it I mean, I'd, I'd say it's mysterious. Made no sense. Kind of like synchronicity in like a in a cursed kind of way. I'm like, how the fuck did this happen? Synchronicity in a cursed way. Yeah. And 
now I'm now I'm like screaming like it sounded like John Tardy from Obituary. It's like I, it's yeah, I was I was heated. Let's say I was heated. I had it, a it thing every time I played New York in one of the bands I was in, I got a cold. And my one of my band members sucks, said, man. "Every time we fucking come here, you." And I was like, "I'm not lying about it, but it was a mental." What's well, the worst? Just when you, it's the worst when you are doing shows and you get sick, and I mean, it's definitely the worst. But that particular show, that wasn't supposed to happen. Still was awesome to me because it was a 20 year anniversary. <laughs> Sam doesn't look disappointed. No, no, it was fucking no, I mean, great. I mean, no, I mean, you know, for fans, it was cool. We were together. The yes. group was together and stuff. You know, we did a, we did a succession of shows. We did a Canadian run. We did uh, I don't think we did Sweden. We you know, and it, it felt good. You know, for me personally, it felt good. I mean, you know, the rehearsals. I mean, we broke our ass. I mean, we were like. Just saying that we were razor sharp tight. I mean, we. I mean, personally, I'm mean, just from like the responses that we were getting there. Yeah. I mean, people were saying like it was the tightest we've ever. Like even in even like when we're seeing the group, you guys were never nearly this tight. It was like it wasn't even. It was like a horse of a, of a different color. Right. So you know, we worked hard to do that. That, that was really cool. And you know, we're getting more show offers. And then, I don't know. It just seemed like we weren't doing shows anymore. Huh. So that's mm-hmm. kind of like you know, I don't know who the you know. It is what it is. I don't know who the flat tire was. It wasn't me. I've been, I've been, you know, since, you know, even before the group got back together, I'd been working. You know what I mean? We were doing the reunion shows. This is, this is great. We're on a roll. The fans are happy. It's like 2015. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And, you know, it stopped. Whatever. So that was that. And that was pretty much, from what I know, just whatever, whatever that was. It's mysterious. All right, man. Cool. That's, yeah. So okay, so is, is that it? No more. No new record in. I'm not, I'm not. You know. I'm not. I'm not. I keep thinking one thing, and then something leads me to believe something else, and then it kind of goes back and forth. Personally, that's just my view of it. It's so like I've been ready. I've, I've had. I've. I've been ready. I've had beats selected. I have sent yeah. beat selections. I mean, you know. So we'll three, keep three three, we'll keep three years. Crossed. Three years. You know, three years. I've been waiting. We'll see what happens. Three years, but over, I'm saying more than th- I'm saying I've been waiting for like twelve years to make a record. I mean, yeah. people now like since the group broke the fuck up, I've been waiting to make another nonfiction record since like 2006. Yeah. So then, you know, someone has to be a narcissist and throw a wrench in that for whatever reason. I'm not saying who what for whatever reason, and now that doesn't happen. So now it's another X amount of years. I'm waiting to do a nonfiction record. Another three years goes by. That doesn't happen. So now fans are like, hey, man, I saw you guys in, in, for three reunion shows. Where's, where's, what where's what happened to the reunion, yeah. man? What's up, man? And I'm like, yeah, hey, I don't know, guy. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not the guy to ask, you know? So it's kind of like the, the stance like I have to take, you know? You know, me, Fair you know I mean, me, you know, and me and Bill have, have, a, have a record coming out. Oh, yeah? So, yeah. It's, just, it's uh, yeah. Yeah, we're we're gonna finish up with that. Yeah, I'm just gonna flip the flip the tape. Quick break. Okay, yeah, so we'll just finish up yeah. with heavy metal. Maps like the Alpha E mower building. I get it in like Larry Davis for sixty rounds. Always make them fiends dance off the fox bloody gowns. Got a white slavery scam out in Cabo Wabo. I keep a hot tin in the projects like Demi Lovato. ATM, she could take the whole fist to half a bottle. We squash bowels like street cleaner control models. I bring the heat, you don't make up for your sins in church. Do it on the streets like three pedestrians, we kill the earth. They say I'm Lucifer, started with my day of birth. Mental funeral, I'm electric, I reinvent the dirt. I bring the heat, you don't make up for your sins in church. Do it on the streets like three pedestrians, we kill the earth. One, two. Yo. <laughs> oh man. Um all right, so I guess that brings us up to what I was talking about. Like so the nonfiction future is is up in the air and that's that's fine. I mean I'll I'll wait for a new album, um, whether it be five or ten years from now, whatever. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's going to be awesome. It's gonna be your Chinese democracy, you know, it's <laughs> whatever twenty well, years I like. mean, <clears throat> Yeah, I don't want I don't want to say that because that, that's an anticlimax and <laughs> it's already cursed and nobody gave a shit about Chinese democracy when it came out. It was, it was you know too late. So I don't I don't I don't want to equate it to that. It's just kind of um, you know if it happens, it's you know personally it's something I want to happen. I think the fans deserve it. I think um, you know just from talking to fans, <clears throat> just all over the place, 
you know, there's nothing more they'd want than that. So come the 20, like 2017, like the imagery that was started on the first Heavy Metal Kings album, which I think was like 2013. So that's like Bill and Vinny Paz from Jedi Mind Tricks. It, I mean, th- this to me was like perfect. Like you should have been that third member in, in my, you know, in my head because of just the imagery um, the lyrics, even the song titles, like yeah, like, I mean, you know, I, jo- I you know, I I could joke about it, but like, you know, like it felt close to home, yeah, because like you know, they're both friends of mine, so I was like, you know, it's sort of like you know that player, that player in like the NBA, you know, what I'm saying he's like on the benches, but it's like you see, and he wants to play, you know, and he sees his friends play, and I'm like, yo, like you know, they both they were both my friends for a while, so it's kind of like you're on half the album. No, no, but I'm saying the first album. Oh yeah, you know, oh the first, yeah, like yeah, the first that's album, right? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm. I'm on the I'm on the bench at that point. I'm just I'm waiting to play. So I'm like, yo, like, you know, I mean, it's a great album, but mm-hmm. I felt like I kind of wanted in, I wanted in on that. Absolutely, yeah. yo. So you know, I'm saying I got in on this one. This shit on that album that that's fucking devastatingly brutal. Do you think it's that's like just, just what some, I think? Sometimes like the the hip hop community uh, seems to like stray away from like that imagery. A lot of people that like hip hop. That kind of that kind of equates that to like, okay, that's rock. Like, now why are these guys like rapping about like Ozzy and this show and this? And is you taking? It's like you know. But that's always been like my thing from the beginning. It's always pushing. It's always pushing it. Whether it's rapping about whatever. So we were looked at as pariahs for like what we're rapping about. You know, you know they, people. You know, most people that listen to hip hop, they want it for inspiration, but it's also for like a positivity to feel good. But and you know some of the stuff we're doing, like some of my music is not is not feel good music. It's not to feel good. It's not to make you feel better. It's a, I mean, not so purposely. It's just not. It's not for that. So it kind of creates this emotional thing that's not really encapsulated or welcomed as much. Yeah. In hip hop, you know, someone's like you're a horrorcore artist. I'm not a fucking horrorcore artist. No, I'll I mean, say it now. I've not. never ever been a horrorcore artist. I've rapped about that shit. I've rapped about fucking dead bodies 20 years ago and fucking raping nuns and all that shit and so did Nas so right. Nas isn't fucking horrorcore Scarface yeah I mean some pe- Scarface you could say has has influential elements in horrorcore but Nas said horrific things Nas talked about anal fucking nuns you know right. the things Nas talked about I talked about the same thing um, so going back to like the first video of the Heavy Metal Kings album was Merciful Fate the second one you put that together? Uh yeah yeah, me so, and me and uh, me and my friend Jimmy from uh, Sweden. This cat that lives in Sweden, we put that together. Uh, I mean, for something like that. I mean, the, the music was so grim. Yeah. That you know, we just put it together. We didn't, you know, if anything, we just didn't care about like trying to, you know, impress it, anybody or being with like you know the cool high school lunch table. Yeah. Like, we're like you know fuck everybody. Like, like I mean, at that point, you know, we're just like alienating people. That's you know if if you like it cool if you get it cool. If you don't like then you don't then yeah it's on you because it's like if you know if you have interest check it out absolutely it, you know of course it's gonna turn some people off because it's like it's it's always like that there's always gonna be people like yo I'm not fucking with that you know this is like hip hop purists I get it like yo I'm not fucking with that kill your mother shit that's the which is hysterical in a way because it's not really you know but I get that's the thing they're just in it for the hip hop they don't right. want to know about that and then there's kids that are you know there's like. Some real, you know, we have real strange fans. Like, let's just say, let's put it that way. That which is a whole other like twelve hour podcast. Exhibit A. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> to my I, right, <laughs> like, Vin, like, Vin, like, like Vinny, like Vinny Paz has a podcast where he talks about like yeah. letters and Broad stuff like that. Weird bully. shit. Yeah, I mean, you know, shout out. Um, yeah, we could do that too. I mean, this shit is, you know, so we, this so there's a weird cross section of fans that we get people, you know. Metalheads, punks, hip hop kids. It's always, you know, I think it's, it's people, been a weird mixture. Yeah, people of, that just like like everything. Did you genuinely want to write a book on Iron Maiden? Jesus, yeah, I did actually. Like, like a loser geek that I was. But Absolutely. Just a, like covering the albums or covering everything, a whole a whole like career span of everything from like origins to albums. I mean, this was like '84. So it's like I I'm going to send you a video of this yeah. dude, the Rageaholic. Without. He he does something called Mythos, and he did like an hour and ten episodes. I've, se- I've seen Mythos. I've seen I've seen um I seen the one he did on Wasp. Okay, I've seen that. It's that dude. Yeah, no doubt. It's definitely um. I'll send you I'll send you the Maiden one because yeah, it's, no doubt. It's I mean, he, def- he definitely goes in. He definitely he definitely goes, goes in. in on that absolutely. And and at first, like I was like, this dude is annoying as fuck. I I saw him do the Danzig one, and then once I got into it, I realized how much time he took to do it how big of a fan he was and how good the editing and, and the wit and the jokes were well, well yeah well the thing was he's opinionated oh yeah and the thing is like some of the shit he'll say I agree with 
a couple of things he's off on. Yeah. And it's not, and it's like, and his thing will be like, well, my word is this and it's that. Like, nah, brother, you're off. I'll tell you you're off on that. Yeah. Like, I'll agree with him and say, yeah, that's cool. You know, I'm just saying because certain things he is off on. Of course. But, and that's great. That's, that's fine. That's his, you know, he's getting views. I've seen a couple of his, um, couple's episodes. Pretty good. He takes yeah, he time did. into it. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. I mean, I think if anybody's such a, a big enough fan as he is or whatever, and he just do it if you want to dissect the music. But yeah, this is pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. So just out of curiosity, give me your two favorite Iron Maiden albums. Definitely, X, peace, definitely, definitely <laughs> peace. Definitely peace of mind. Okay. Probably by Number of the Beast. Okay, so that's that's one and two. Yeah. I do mean, you want to know mine? Uh, yeah. <laughs> should, I guess, should I guess yours? <laughs> yeah. I'm on some poser shit Give me a second I'll be able to guess it If you give me a second <laughs> The seventh son of a seventh son That's my favorite And no prayer for No 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 Oh seventh son H- Hell no yeah, Tell I mean, Listen seventh son Seventh son is my seven. favorite And yeah. it's somewhere in time Is my second Really Yeah Alright Yeah <laughs> I know. Not, no, nah, man. I just listen, man. You All know, the old everybody. school fans, like, I like really. Yeah, like, I mean, it's weird because, like, by by seven son of seven son, I was in depression. Okay. Like, you, like you might have been like, yo, this is the best thing. I had. I was going through clinical was depression because that album. I felt like the magic was completely drained from them, and like I could see the studio situation. Like they're throwing together pieces, keyboards. And, like as a weirdo fan, I was. I'm like, what's happening here? This is something happening. They threw guitar synths on it. They threw keyboards. Yeah, there's there's measures that don't go anywhere. Can I play with madness? I know. Sea of, I mean, Sea what? of Madness is, yeah, is somewhere in time. Yeah, but I'm just saying like that. I mean, Seven Sun was like it was depressing for me. I didn't like the artwork. I didn't like the. Oh. I'm, <laughs> saying, I'm saying I could go in for like ten hours of what yeah. I just didn't like. And listen, if you it's like, like my favorite album it, that's cover, great. listen, that's that's a great thing because it's still made and it's still, yeah. you know. So it's like as much as my you know. And after that, it, it was over. So it's like then later on, I wanted to write a book like maybe 10 years ago about <laughs> what happened in like 85 of when Maiden lost their magic, you know? Okay. Oh, Like that right. particular thing, which is probably like the World Slavery Tour because they toured for like yes, 19 live months. after death. That burned them out. They yeah. were finished after that, whatever. They did Somewhere in Time. Cool. Two good songs on it, I think. The rest is, I mean, it's, it's subjective, but the cover, amazing. The magic on its way out. Yeah. There's moments in all of them. I mean, you can't really say... You know, if I had to pick, it would be peace of mind and power yeah. slave. Just Absolutely. the fact that you want to Absolutely. write a book on it just blows my mind. So. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I <laughs> want to throw I, some shine on that. Oh no doubt. I mean, I did, I did, I did get to about thirty-eight pages, thirty-nine <laughs> really? pages. That's... I did about thirty-nine pages, handwritten, untyped. All right, so There's still uh, time. I could still, you know, to finish up. Uh, you said you and Bill were working on something. Yeah, me and Bill are doing something. I don't want to let too much, you know, out of the bag, but I mean, we already started recording, and the shit is. So it's kind of like to answer your question is like about like the nonfiction stuff. I don't know. This is kind of like even better. Okay. Hmm. So it's kind of just like you, you can look at yeah. Not because it's just us, because mm. this has the potential to make that obsolete. Like it never happened. I'm not wishing that. I'm just saying it's that powerful. Like what we're doing, just me and him. It's a different kind of energy. You right. Know what I mean, so it's like you know, it's it's it's. You know, it encompasses nonfiction energy, but also encompasses his solo stuff, my stuff. And when you put those three elements together, so far it sounds ridiculous. We is it a group? Is there a name, or are you going to do it I don't as want, just? I, it's, it's 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 a name. I mean, you know, it's it's a concept, and it's something. It's basically the title is Super Coven because oh, okay. that's you know that's okay. what it leads up to that. That's a label. a label, yeah. Yeah, but that's what that's what we're doing. It's on a musical, we put a product out. It would be that. You know, it's not um, nice. It's not, so. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, so far, so far, this shit is shit is it's fucking brutal. So, so I could really say about it. You know, it'll be a couple, couple of our friends on it. It's not going to be six thousand collabs, but it's going to be it's going to be fire. Who are you fucking with now? Like, let's say, like in the last few years, like as far as rappers go, like anyone out new that that, that you you listen to. I mean, I like I like rappers who respect the game and don't rip people off. I mean, it's, I'll listen to anybody. Just just please don't sound like somebody. Yeah. That's all. I, that's all. I'm, I'm not really, I'm not a purist douchebag. But there's a lot of shit I, I hear, I, I don't really fuck with. You know, I mean, the last couple of years, yeah, I fuck with Conway, oh, West yeah. Side Gun, Benny. Oh, yeah. I mean, because tr- I mean, because the thing is, the shit is raw, and it's it's gone back to, you know, loops and fucking hard beats and like gross fucking brutal sounds. Right. They're, they're what on. do you like? This, this is it. What are you putting over it? What do you got? If you're whack, get the fuck out of here. These are brutal beats. Spit brutality. And they're doing it. So Conway's doing it. And that. the thing is, if, if no one else is doing it, and they did it, and, and cool, man, let, there's going to be other people now that say, okay, there's going to be, this is something we could do. Younger people are going to say, okay, we could aspire to do this, for better or worse. It says, let us more out there than just trap. 
and like other stuff. So now yeah. there's that because that's just coming more to the forefront. Even though it's been there already, everything they're doing has been done already. They're just doing it in a very brutal way, and I give it up. You know what I'm saying? The shit is the shit is brutal. Other than that, there's really not that many. I, I would say new artists. I'm trying to. I mean, what about some metal bands? Um, this kid Crime Apple. Fuck with his shit. No um, new, no new thrash bands. What's the name of it? I mean, new thrash crime apple. You're not fucking with Warbringer. My man, my man, my man little, little Ito, Eto. He's got some new shit. He's doing some shit with mugs. He's coming out. Okay. Me, and him, me and him are doing the EP too. Hmm. I don't know why I forgot that, but yeah, me and uh, me and little Ito are doing the EP. Shout out to little Ito. Um, shout out to V Don, and um, shout out to Puppet, aka Ricky Casso. <laughs> fucking shout out to Ricky Castle. You shout know out to saying? Northport. Yeah, get yeah. <laughs> get with the program, Ricky. Lot. Come on, get your shit together. Let's yeah, go. That's right. And we'll make you sure that I mean? we Let's put up go, all Ricky. these links. You'll let yeah, me know yeah, whatever. Absolutely, absolutely. You Especially have to promote. So you know, we got yeah. the e- we got the EP. Um, Goon Cinema. Me and Little Ito. Yeah. Um, that shit is fire. Little Ito did most of the beats. Yeah, that's, that's fire. Me and Bill. Also, Bleach Eater. Which is a band that's on Supercoven, which is pretty much a subsidiary of Supercoven, but they're basically a grindcore band and shit. Um, I put them out in thirteen. They're from New York, brutal, doing their second album right now. So what do they sound like? Uh, who does Bleachy to sound like? I mean, I would say probably like a little bit of Terrorizer. Okay. Uh, like mix it, mix with like Morbid Angel a little bit. It's more on the grind tip. I mean, Morbid Angel's playing Long Island. Yeah, no doubt. Definitely, yeah. definitely gonna peep that. But uh, yeah, so I mean, just you know, keep 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 creating a lot of the music coming out, and uh, you know, it's just gonna be busy. It's not really gonna be any long interruptions with no music. It's Where's not the best place anymore. to find what you're doing? Because Instagram, you put up a lot of uh, yeah, cool I, yeah. posts, but it's not necessarily related to your music. It's a yeah, lot. Of, yeah, it's well, I mean, the thing so is that, do I you mean, have like a website? Well, well, the ironic thing is, it's probably the best place that would be related to anything for me. Actually, is Instagram? Is, is Instagram yeah. It's, okay. Because because the thing is, like, I have problems with the website again. Like I'm like I'm telling you, it's like. I put up, you know, goreelohim.com. It's been nothing but trouble. Nothing but trouble. So now I it's clicked off. on it and it wasn't. Now there. it's off. So, yeah. so, you, so you understand what I'm saying. So yeah. It, so you know, there's there's this like this genuine effort where someone is going for fucking years to just continually fuck with my shit. I mean, yeah. I know two douchebags that like hold something over my head. Like one douchebag owns supercoven.com, which he bought to spite me. You know what I mean? Which is a whole other story. You know, hmm. he knows when I see him, I'm gonna hit him with a bat. It's not. It's not up for it. It's not. Allegedly, yeah, whatever. Allegedly. I, don't give a, I don't give a fuck. I, I feel like this is so, gonna be a part two <laughs> yeah. to this. So we gotta have. So this, so this, so this, this pussy owns supercoven dot com. So I couldn't. So I can't get that. So goreelohim dot com. Now that's taken down. So now I gotta. You know, it, it's a whole process. I don't have five people helping me. Never yeah. did. I don't have a whole office for people help me. If I had two or three people help me on the on the. To be honest with you, like on the website tip and that stuff, things would be moving a little more quickly. I got two last questions. Yeah, dude. One. I like that that you actually had a track on Electric Lucifer, Brown Bunny. Did you like Brown Bunny? Oh yeah, I mean, it's, 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 I mean, you know, Do you know Brown it's, Bunny. It's, yeah, you know, okay. It's it's a wacky movie. It's totally alienating. Yeah, it's great, man. It's far okay. Out. Yeah, yeah, it's I, far I, out. It's just I, like, you know, I fuck with Vincent Gallo on one movie, Buffalo '66. Yeah, of course. I think that's like the gem. Yeah, but how are you gonna forget about the funeral? I I never saw the funeral, dude. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Was I, don't, it? I don't. I don't. I don't even want to. Like, if I just watch it, like, does just, Chloe Sevigny suck his dick in that? No, 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 no. It's just, it's just, he's just, he's great in that. He's actually, he's actually really good in that. He's actually, okay. Yeah, she's not, she's not in it. Right. But uh, I yeah. might have to watch it then. You need, you need to check that out. Yeah, I mean, dude, Brown Bunny is just cult. Just, you know, just, it's like it's almost like a gummo thing. It's pretty, well, I mean, gummo is way better. I mean, if you gummo had, is better, but gummo, why gummo is it is better? Because it's fucking ridiculous when you really think about it. Well, it's a classic because it's like someone on drugs makes a movie about people on drugs yeah. for people on drugs to show other people while they're on drugs. You know what's fucked up? I saw the movie on drugs. I'm sober now, but like, actually, maybe no, I must have seen it on drugs. And that makes a lot of fucking sense. Because it's, a, it's a mess. I'm saying it's, I can I can tell you it's a mess. It, sh- it shouldn't have been made. And it's, here's the thing. So fucked. so Belly, it was playing in Belly, right? Yeah, the movie Belly. Belly. And and okay. uh, I feel like I I have never talked to Joey Badass, but if I could, I would be like, yo, he put like a clip of Gummo on um, his first album, and I, it had to be just from watching it on Belly. I couldn't imagine yeah, that he a lot ran. Of pe- a lot of people. That's their first. Like oh yeah, wasn't that in Belly? Like yeah, but it's been around so much longer than that. It's, it's so like you know. It's, Shout out to Harmony Corrine. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, he's the man, actually. <laughs> he's the man. Yeah, he's an animal for making that movie. I think, you know, the soundtrack to that movie. I mean, it's so offensive when it came out. I'm, I'm still surprised more people haven't seen it. Yeah, it's crazy. But, you know, I mean, yeah, we were, we were, we were on top of that shit when it, when it dropped. It was, it was a... It was a I, visual fiasco, dude. Absolutely. It takes some acid and watch that shit. I, I, I dare you. I might, dare you to do might that. Might do that after. <laughs> I don't take anybody. that dare. George, you want to do the last I'm question? Saying. I'm sure. just saying. The last question. Last question is, the name of the podcast is If I Ruled the World. So we pose to our guests that question, if you ruled the world, Gore, what would that look like? It would be destroyed instantly. I would burn it into fucking ash in a heartbeat. There would be no time to think of anything. I would burn it to fucking ash. That's the most unique answer we've ever gotten. I don't think anyone's stopping that answer. No. It, it usually I goes you, a little bit more, more play, I can give you more playful, non-nihilistic answer. No, I, it's just, it's, I don't it's want just, yeah, it's, I don't yeah. want that answer. You want I, the truth. Like, you know, I want I mean, the truth. We're, we're, listen, you know, we're in, we're in a bad spot. People don't, want to, people don't want to say what's really going on. We're living in a fucking simulation. If we have 10 years left here, that'd be shocking to me, okay? Time is of the essence. Because I know you talk a lot about the maybe, end maybe, times. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like 15 years, I think. I'm Listen, 15. I'm saying, I got kids. I'm not like some fucking weird. It's like, oh, I'll kill everybody because I'm miserable and, you know, like, jerk off to too much internet porn and want to kill myself and do drugs. No, this is real, like, this is real shit. Like, it's, it's going down. I mean, people know that already, but, you know, you could see FEMA trucks taking out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trains going through America with missiles on them. I do mean, you feel? Think, like, we, I mean, we can go on. That's another ten hours. But do I mean, you think I'm we're going to disintegrate like, before or after nonfiction out? Wow, that's a good one. I mean, that's, <laughs> what, what could be said about that? Yeah. I, mean, I have to actually think about that. Yeah. That's really that's it's, a good one. What, yeah, what comes mean, first, the bomb um, or the album? The bombing, <laughs> definitely. Do you think the end times is government, or is it? Like a, like a esoteric, like religious. Well, right. That's that's well. That's the that's the thing to be decided, and that's the thing that's the hardest thing to actually figure out because, you know, you know that there's definitely extraterrestrials. We know that whether okay. they're, whether you know whether they're government made, whether they're government made or self produced. None of this technology is ours. So you know, I start from basics. None of this is ours. So, call it nihilistic. I mean, everything I pretty much <laughs> said came. You know, unfortunately, you know, came true. Whether it was nine eleven, whether unfortunately, so. <laughs> I, you know, I don't want to be fucking Debbie Downer, but things are not, we're not looking good right now. So. Well, I feel like we, we got to have Gore back. Jesus. Like yeah. we need Let's seven hours. For more, for more, for more negative, uh, yeah. negative. Uh, like if the, if the world doesn't end, feedback. we'll have you back. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, if we do a In NPR under 15 album. years, we will have yeah, you definitely. back. Yeah. Um, are I, you, I would love to be back. Definitely. Thank you so much for doing it, especially for me. Like I said, I'm a Jenny. Like no problem, brother. Shout out to to Nick for for hooking this up. Yeah, Nick is the man. Shout mm-hmm. out to Klaus. So definitely, like I said, thanks you, thank you for doing it and all that other shit, man. Dude, no problem, man. Anytime, all right, man. All right. If I rule the world, I love them, love them, baby.